hockey brand. Go ahead, Bellin. Good afternoon, Rams fans across these great United States of America. Welcome to Bowman Gray Stadium. We're Scott Brand filling in for the working Alan Chavis this afternoon. Scott, we are about, what, 15 hours away from when we thought this game was going to kick off? We, we certainly are. And, of course, last night the weather played an issue in the game, uh, postponing it until today. And, of course, today weather is going to be another but it's going to be a positive one, but it is awfully hot. Ken, right now, temperature kickoff, it's 84 degrees. Feels like it's 97. You think it's going to be a little warmer on the field, though? I think it will be probably about 5 degrees warmer on that field because the heat tends to radiate from the asphalt down in that area. And, uh, of course, the humidity feels still just a little bit spongy from all the rain that we had last night. And, folks, uh, we thought, you know, for the longest time, the storms were around us, and it was perfectly dry here at Bowman Gray Stadium. Two storms converged on us, and boy, did it rain. The rain was coming down sideways. But UNC Pembroke, the opponent this afternoon, they actually had to drive back to uh, to the university and drive back up this morning because, obviously, they didn't come prepared to spend the night. No, absolutely. So they got to they gotta make the extra bus lag, I guess you would call it. <laughs> but tonight, the only thing, the weather, uh, the sun's behind clouds, it seems like, most of the day today. So the sun shouldn't be a factor. There's no wind to speak of right now, and we're getting ready for the kickoff and uh, excited to be on board my first Rams football game. Welcome to the broadcast suite here at Bowman Gray Stadium. Kicking off for the Rams this afternoon is going to be Riley Robbins. Kickoff goes out of bounds at about the 22, 23 yard line. So Pembroke, you know, if if the player, uh, I think it was number 36, he caught the football for, for the, the Braves and stepped out of bounds. If he had let it go out of bounds without touching it, they would have got the ball, I think, at the 35. Yeah, I was, uh, I, I don't know why he fielded that. It was kind of, a, it looked like uh, the, the kicker got his foot a little bit under, under it. More air time than distance, but uh, regardless, here we go with the first uh, first play. Joshua Dell, the quarterback for UNC Pembroke. The Rams beat this team last year at Pembroke, a game that was played on a Thursday night. Now we have our first penalty flag of the 2018 season. Yeah, it seems like the yellow birds have landed already. Ken, I know that that was an issue last year in some key, key games with the uh, – with the Rams here, so hopefully, uh, unfortunately, this one's going to go against them for offside, so hopefully they can uh, gain the discipline and, and stay out of the uh, the officials' back pockets with those uh, yellow flags. The official, uh, Scott, it's no longer called offsides. It's now defensive encroachment. I, I apologize. We've gotten more fancy with the terminology. Been 34 years, I might have the odd <laughs> wrong term. <laughs> but a touchdown is still six points, and you got to go across the goal line. Uh, quarterback handoff to the running back. He's going to be slammed out of bounds in front of the Winston-Salem State bench. That's Josh Sheridan. He's going to pick up a first down at about the 35-yard line. So a nice run, kind of a sweep around the left side. Yeah, he got enough for the first down. Browning right there uh, uh, with a nice tackle, though, forces him out of bounds. And, uh, and, and yeah, they get the five yards, but they didn't get uh, a lot more. Wide receiver in action. Here's a snap. High snap. Quarterback handoff again to Sheridan. And he is tackled after making a progress of a, maybe a yard. Be easier to tell you who didn't make the tackle on that one. Great game tackle there by, by Winston-Salem State. And uh, and uh, Penbrook just lining up with one uh, one running back in the, uh, in the backfield there. Didn't get uh, much on that. Maybe they're calling it a gain of one. Jarrell Bright, the senior from Charlotte, played at Mallet Creek High School, the, making the lead tackle for the Rams. He'll officially get credited for a yard, but second down and a long nine. Now Dale, the quarterback, pass incomplete. It hits the turf, but I tell you, right there for the Rams, almost making or having a chance for an interception was a true a redshirt freshman, Najee Tucker from Salisbury. West was the intended receiver there, and you'd mentioned the, the pass went right behind him, so obviously miscommunication. You know, Ken, at some point we're, we're going to ask you, you know, this team was ready to go last night, both teams. How is the day off going to affect them? But uh, let's go back to third down now. 
Third down and nine for UNC Pembroke. Dale back to pass. Pressure being put on. He's going to be sacked about the 22-yard line. In there, making that sack for the Rams. Jack Nimmons, our senior defensive lineman from Reedsville, played at Reedsville High School. And that's a loss of, what, about 10, 11, 12 yards on that play. And, and that's like reading Moby Dick. It's a great read there for that young man. He just walked right in and, and had a clear shot at the quarterback and, 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 and put him right on the turf there. So outstanding def defense so far for the Rams in the first series. Darius Skinner and Jalen Barber back to return. A high snap on the punt. He's going to be lucky if he gets it off. He just barely does. Fair catch being signaled by Jalen at the 42-yard line. So, Scott, the Rams have outstanding field position here in this first quarter presented by Community Tax and Solutions. Well, yeah, and, and Ken, I mean, it's important. I mean, everybody's fired up. The defense obviously did their job. It's now up to the offense. I'm sure they were all ready to go last night, and uh, we'll see how the 15-hour delay does to them, but I'm sure they're going to come out right now. Let's go for a big play early. Carry on more in the backfield. Fourth-year starter Rod Tinsley calling the signals for the Rams. Hand off to carry on as expected. He's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and brought down, uh, looks like a helmet come off of a brave number 99. Let's see who that is. I have to put on my reading glasses here to see the numbers are so small. Yeah, the, the, the rosters weren't exactly printed for us with snow on the uh, top of our heads. Where it was it? That's uh, Nathan, Nathan London. London. He's from Winston-Salem, played at Carver High School. He will have to sit out of play. Actually, a loss of a yard on that play. This time, carry on. Trapped in the backfield, tries to turn around the corner on the edge and gets back to the line of scrimmage before he's forced out of bounds. Number 38, yeah, Josh Manns there with a stop there from Durham. You know, so far they tried to run two, uh, the Rams have tried to run two. Uh, two sweeps. Uh, two sweeps, and, and Ben Berthy obviously, or Penbrook, I apologize, is, uh, is obviously reading the plays well. Community Tax and Payroll Solutions bringing you this first quarter of action from Bowman Gray Stadium, owned by a WSSU alumnus. All taxes prepared by an enrolled agent. Rod Tinsley back to pass. He got plenty of time looking downfield. Got a receiver wide open at the 11 yard line. The catch is made and the Rams will have first and goal making that catch. It looks like number 87, Quincy Jackson. Yeah, Quincy had to wait for the ball. He almost looked like an outfielder there. Ball was thrown a little bit behind him, but wide open and all the time in the world. So a great job by the, uh, the offensive line, giving their quarterback enough time to set that play up. First and goal for the Rams. The ball is going to be marked at the six yard line. Fantastic play by Rod Tinsley. Like you said, uh, Scott, he had plenty of time to make that pass and found the receiver wide open. The handoff to carry on more. Carry on breaks a tackle. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Well, that's a great way to start a season. That's a mountain fried chicken touchdown. Rams pinned. Uh, had it. Third down and about 12 to go. And that long pass to Quincy Jackson sets up carry on Moore's run into the end zone. Rams lead at 6-0 with 11.27 to play here in the Community Tax and Payroll Solutions first quarter. And Pablo on for the extra point. Kick it's, is good. It is good. The official's a little slow in raising their arms down there. And you're going to need to help me pronounce this young man's <laughs> kicker's <laughs> last name because it's uh, he's from Winston-Salem, uh, North Carolina. Played at Parkland High School. That's Pavel uh, Buenaventura. So that's going to – that's why they don't have the jer names on the back of the jerseys. But what a great what a great first uh, first series of uh, – or possession by, uh, by by the Rams here. Nice uh, long pass to set it up, and then and then the, the run in the end zone. There was a the, the young man bounced off one tackler, and then continued. Kept the legs driving like you taught in high school. You keep the legs driving. Good things happen right in the end zone. Carry on is built low to the ground, and he can be an absolute bulldozer uh, when he's running. I think more from a slant or straight ahead than on a sweep. 
and he certainly showed that power. He just plowed over uh, one defensive player and pretty much danced into the end zone untouched. Well, it seems so far the Rams have determined the sweep's not going to work today. So we, uh, we're we going to have the air, uh, hopefully the air defense going on, or the air offense going on, I should say, and then uh, just run it up the gut here and see how it goes. Riley Robbins, a true freshman <laughs> from Ponte Verdra, Florida, kicking off for the Rams. You know, two years ago, Will Johnson, uh, our all CIAA kicker, punter, wielded everything. He was absolutely awesome. A short punt. It's going to be fielded at about the 27, 28 yard line. Did, did you kind of just see he took two steps and kicked it almost like you're kicking a field goal instead of running to kick a, uh, a, a kickoff? So, a little surprised on, on his approach, but. Ball comes down to uh, the 26-yard line, and uh, and the Braves will have to start there, and let's hope that the Rams' defense can step up. Calling the signals for UNC Pembroke, Joshua Dale. Handoff that time and getting absolutely nowhere. To Quadrin Williams, a redshirt junior, 5'6", 175 pounds, picks up a couple of yards. And, and Bright there with his stop didn't just the guy kept moving his feet and he's like a brick uh, a brick wall there. Second down and eight for the Braves operating from their own 30 or correction make that 28 yard line. Dale back to pass pressure being put on and he's going to be sacked again brought down from behind by number 42 Jack Nimmons Jack showing that senior leadership on the football field. If I uh, remember correctly, it's two sacks. <laughs> Already two sacks. And, and, and he's, a, he's a big boy. Can I, I don't want to see that young man chasing me down. <laughs> uh, Jack Nimmons, 6'4", 270 pounds. Played at Reedsville High School, and Reedsville has one of the perennial powerhouses in football in the state of North Carolina. Won the state championship, uh, uh, I think, the past couple of years. And uh, what Graham's defense, just looking outstanding, it's now third and... Uh, I think it's 15. Third down and 17. 17. I was trying to give him a little break there. Dale, obviously a passing situation. The pass is going to be incomplete. It goes off the fingertips. Well, Dale didn't look very well. He, hit, he had a receiver open up the, up the middle here. I doubt it would have got him the first down, but it would have got him a little bit more yardage. Tyshawn and, uh, Carter, the intended receiver, goes off his fingertips. And once again, the Rams defense has held. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> three and out for the Braves. He's a Chicago Bears fan. It reminds me of the Bears of the 80s and uh, all defense here. And and so now the uh, the Rams are going to hopefully get the ball back after this after this punt. Isaac Parks back to punt. Now the snap was high on the first punt from this young man. This time a perfect snap. Gets a punt off and taking it at about the 30-yard line for the Rams. It's going to be number two. Darius Skinner, Darius brought down at the 35, but still good field position for the Rams. Real good, real good field position, Ken, and uh, we'll see what the offense is going to come out and do. You think you're going to run it or you're going to go right to the air? I think they're going to try the running game and see if they can really get that cranked up. Uh, it's actually placed at the 36, first and 10 to the Rams are in the Community Tax and Payroll Solutions first quarter here at Bowman Gray Stadium. A, a hot Humid, sunny Sunday afternoon. And the sun, as you said it, just came out, so a little bright now back there on the field. Rod Tinsley looking, hands off to carry on more. Carry on straight ahead and put, moves it up to about the 37 yard line. So we're going to see a gain of, uh, let's see where they're officially going to mark it. They always. They'll put it at the 38, so gain of a couple of yards on that play. Second down and eight. Yeah, there was a hole there, but quickly uh, filled up. I thought more make it a little bit uh, more uh, yardage out of it. But uh, regardless, second down and see what the Rams do now. Appears they're going to go for a pass. Tinsley looking, slips, falls, gets up. Actually, he put his hand down. He, his knee never touched. He hangs on to the ball himself. Oh, that's oh, a late hit. Good. Flag, 15 yards. Yeah, that oh. was. 
They're, they're saying 57 there for uh, for the Braves. Uh, got pushed. That's Alex Richardson from uh, Ash County, North Carolina. Did, no question, it was late yet. I don't I, probably just being a little overzealous first game of the season, but not a very uh, smart play. And that'll be a personal foul, I believe. 15 yards. 15 yards. Drive picked up good yardage on that. Personal Ran foul. the football out to Take the 43-yard line. So the 15-yard penalty will put it in Rams territory. Actually, they're calling a face mask on <laughs> but hmm. didn't see him grab the face mask, but there's no doubt about it. It was a late hit. First and 10 Rams at the 42-yard line of UNC Pembroke. So Rams are driving, leading 7 to nothing here with 8.45 to play in the first quarter. You're listening to Rams football on the WSSU Rams Sports Network. The handoff to carry him more. He finds an opening at the 35, still on his feet, game tackled at the 30, and finally brought down at the 29-yard line. And that's just, that, you know, that's why I call carry him more a bulldozer. Well, there's no question about it. Can he, he was stopped back at about the uh, – about the 32-yard line, and then his, his his leg power. I mean, this young man must just have tremendous leg strength. Got him an extra three or four yards. Definitely picks up the first down here, but what a tremendous uh, athlete. First and 10 Rams at the Braves, 29-yard line. Offense marching down the field here in the second series of this football game for Winston-Salem State. Rod Tinsley, this time the handoff to, uh, I think that was number 22, number Antoine Pittman. He is a redshirt freshman getting number his number first number carry number. as a Rams football player, and he picks up about six yards, seven yards on that play. It's going to be second down and three. Quick again, Pittman the ball carrier. Again on the and he's going to be close to the first down, Scott. He is, and the Rams have got this hurry-up offense going on right now. I think they think they've, they've spotted something in, in the Braves that they can capitalize on. Now they slow it down a little bit. Well, they moved, they moved the ball back and say he got back to the line of scrimmage. I thought he picked up a little bit more than that, but it would be third down and three. I did too, but that's probably why we're not in stripes. Or we haven't been convicted yet, either one. You know, if they send it up to us to review the play, it would have been a first down. There you go. Third down and three Rams. I think we're in four down territory right now. Uh, at the football at the 22. Uh -huh. Rod Tinsley, the fake, he slips on the turf, falls, and he's going to lose back to the 26-yard line. Tough break, and that's where, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the field is a little spongy from all the rain that we had last night. Yeah, so, so that sets up fourth down. Fourth down and five, and uh, the Rams are going to go for it. Or perhaps they're going to try to draw Pembroke off sides and pick up the first down. Let's see what it's going to be. Rod Tinsley standing back at the 30-yard line. And a new running back. Looks like Roosevelt Appleton in the backfield. Tinsley hangs on to the football, carries it down to the 20. It's going to be awful close, but I think he may be a half yard shy. Yeah, I think so too. And he... Uh, he had a good play. Uh, and a Rams player is down on the field. The training staff quickly out. I can't tell what the number is. Yep, Ellis Crawford, though, of the, uh, the Braves just uh, nailed the quarterback just short. And you're right, there is a Rams player it down. It looks like senior offensive lineman Devontae Mackey, and he is a uh, uh, plays a critical role. Tell you the, 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 the medical staff was out there before, almost before the play stopped. So, kudos to them. They're a great, uh, great awareness there. Uh, they look like they're working on the lower obstrinities of the young man. So probably a knee, or we don't want to guess, guess, but uh, you know, anytime it's below the waist, it's probably uh, less serious than any kind of a uh, head or shoulder situation. Yeah, and I will brag on our training staff, our medical staff here at the University of Football. Scott, three years ago, we had a young man that had uh, a neck injury in, in, in practice, uh, Juan Gaddy from Charlotte. And the doctors at Wake Forest Baptist credited our training staff with a quick action and what they did to stabilize his neck and everything uh, to keep him from being par paralyzed for the rest of his life. Can I tell you how impressed I am with the Rams right now? 
Is, is everybody Ken? There's a young. Well, there, it is a leg injury. You can tell what he's coming off. Yeah. But I'm impressed by the Rams. I mean, they're all on one knee, respecting their opponent with, with, with the injury, and this is incredible teamwork. And you know, it looks like a pretty bad knee uh, knee injury. Young man's not putting any pressure on it, but uh, you know, I'm sure they'll. Uh, They'll, they'll fix him and, and hopefully get him going. And that's a big loss on that offensive line. Devontae Mackey, a senior. And Scott, you know, you're new to, to the to the Rams, uh, but we call ourselves the Ramily. The Ramily. The Ramily. Okay. Uh, and that's fans, alumni, anybody who's associated uh, with our university. And... And let me tell you, it's absolutely incredible. First and ten for the Braves. The Rams were just a tad short of picking up the first down, operating from their own 20-yard line. The handoff is going to be to number five, and that is, as I check the roster, that's going to be uh, Quanton Williams. Does that look right? Uh, Quandron Williams, a uh, red shirt junior. He is second on the depth chart. Picks up about two, we'll call it three yards, second down and seven at the 23. Well, Josh Dale wasn't even on the field for that play, so I think they were trying something different, maybe catch the reins off guard. And, uh, and so they're trying to generate some offense. They haven't really got much going, Ken. Dale on the field now calling the signals. Dropping back to pass. Again, pressure being put on. He's almost tripped up, going to hang on to the football, and he's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. I guess who, number 42. Jack Nimmons again. Flag on the play. Let's wait and see what the call is going to be from the guys with the stripes. See, he called it offsides. Offsides on the Rams. Late flag. I thought we got rid of that. It's not. It's encroachment, isn't it? Yeah, it's defensive <laughs> encroachment is the technical term for it, just like illegal procedures now a false start on the offense. And it moves it up five, second down and two. The pass incomplete. That pass intended to number 14. Well, I'm not quite. Shimon Higgs. Not quite sure that the uh, that uh, the Braves picked up the uh, the blitz there, but the uh, the Rams definitely blitzed there, and uh, he had to get the pass off pretty quick, and and couldn't uh, couldn't connect with his receivers. So that brings up third down. Joshua Dale, Ofer in the passing department in this game. First quarter, the Community Tax and Payroll Solutions. First quarter, call 336-813-7311 if you need help with preparing your income taxes and let me tell you that's a challenge every year well, especially your income tax with your bracket Ken yeah picking out all those zeros <laughs> with nothing in front of them handoff Braves are going to pick up their first first down in the football game the ball carried that time by number 37 that's uh, Sheridan once again he's actually the true running back on the team and uh, this is the best field position that I believe that they've had here in this community tax and payroll solutions first quarter. Well, you know, I don't think it was necessarily so much of a trick play here. It just looked like some sloppy tackling, tackling by the Rams. Maybe the, uh, you know, maybe they're over the uh, the first play of the uh, of the game here, and uh, they just got to go back to getting their assignments because the young man was able to slip through uh, quite a number of uh, Ram tacklers. First and ten, Dale back, hands it off, run up to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard on that play and carrying the football that time was Tyshawn Carter, a redshirt freshman from Charlotte, played at Rocky River High School. They have a good program down at Rocky River. Uh, second down and nine. Well, it seems like the Rams have done a nice job here, defending against anything to the outside. So I'm surprised the Braves haven't tried to run it up the middle more. Traditionally, Winston-Salem State has had one of the top defenses in all of Division II. Uh, again, the handoff this time to Brown. He finds some open room. He's in Rams territory. Finally dragged down at about the 43-yard line. That's Josh Sheridan. 5'9", 205 pounds. Darius Skinner with the, uh, with the stop there. Again, again, right up the gut. You know, as he said, the Rams doing a nice job of, of correcting or uh, defending the perimeter, but... 
Dale Can't Hanson go the again to Sheridan. This time he's going to be tackled at the 40-yard line. Pick up, picks up three yards on that play. So they're getting their offense a little bit more rhythm on it. They are. Yeah, they are. And, and it's uh, it's hopefully the Rams can kind of refocus here. It seems like the Braves have figured out we can run up the middle on the Rams, and, and we'll see if they'll continue. Awful passing game, though, so far. Let's hope they stay that way. Second down and uh, a long seven. This time the pass is complete. The first pass, a pass out of the football game from Dale. That's complete to number 46. It looks like it's going to be John short. Jones. Looks like it'll be short. Uh, be about third down at four. I'm sorry, 46 is Sam Vines, a redshirt freshman. It's a young UNC Pembroke uh, football team. Last year they were two and eight. However, they did beat Lenore Ryan, which traditionally has a, a, a pretty decent football program. Yeah. The Rams last year six and four. And I think there's confusion here. I thought they thought somebody called a timeout. Third down and four. And the referee is winding the clock. 15 seconds on the play clock here in this Community Tax and Payroll Solutions first quarter. It's owned by a WSSU alumnus. Tax is completed by an enrolled agent. If you need help, and I always need help, give them a call. The pass picked up by the Rams. Darius Skinner, he's at the 40, brought down at the 41-yard line. Yeah, nice interception there. Good read on the play. Uh, Tyrell Fleming adding an extra block that uh, able to pick up an extra, uh, Skinner able to pick up an extra five yards. Looks like the ball's going to come out to about the 40, uh, 41, 42-yard line, 42-yard line. Rams get the ball back, so Ken, don't pass if you're the Braves. They've only completed two passes, one of them to us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that. So let's hope that the Rams offense can now uh, start to generate uh, some yards. Once again, carry on more in the backfield. Rod Tinsley dropping back to pass, being pressured, and oh, he's wow. going to be sacked back at the 28-yard line. Boy, the offensive line. And, again, that's where Devontae Mackey, one of the keys on that Rams offensive line, went out in our last series with what appears to be a leg injury. He's being taped right now and attended to. Got a nice pack on his right knee. Yeah, it looked like uh, Brandon uh, Woodward uh, missed his assignment there and, and wide open, uh, almost said wide open shot at the quarterback. Actually, I guess it was a wide open shot at the quarterback. It was just body on body and not with a puck. Second down and about 22. Carry on Moore straight ahead and he's going to be tackled. Uh, I think probably for another loss on that play of about four or five yards. So, carry on not having a lot of success. No, I, I tell you, I, yeah, the Braves are, are, are jamming the metal up too, and so uh, that's that's where he's trying to find an opening. There's just not any there. I think what they probably need to do is try and go out to the outside more or get back to the pass. Well, we've got Cameron Williams in as a wide receiver. So we got th three receivers out. It's like Chandler the Belk on the other side of the field. Again, the handoff to carry on. He goes straight ahead for about two or three yards at the most. And it's going to be third down and, oh, my gosh. It's fourth down. Uh, correction, fourth down at about 22 yards for the Rams. So number 76, Devin Goble, will come in. His first punt as a Ram. Met the young man's uh, parents who came here to the game today. Crowd's starting to fill in nicely here. It is. Uh, come on out to Bowman Gray Stadium. Pre-admission, pre-parking this afternoon. Nine seconds on the play clock. The Rams are short. A man on the field hustling on. Really hustling on is number 92, Theron Ingram. Oh, wow. And the punt is shanked just a little bit. It's going to go out of bounds at the 50-yard line. So UNC Pembroke has excellent field position. Yeah, that punt went off the side of the foot and uh, just kind of quacked its way out of, out of bones there. So uh, you're right, Ben. Uh, UNC with a nice uh, nice field position right at the 50-yard line. Looking at the clock on the scoreboard, there's no time left in this Community Tax and Payroll Solutions 
first quarters. And with that, we will take a break. And coming up, it will be the Mount Zion Baptist Church second quarter. Yeah, the Rams up seven to nothing, scoring on the first offensive series here in the football game. And since then, really neither team has been able to get much going. No, it hasn't. And both teams seem to tr try and be forcing plays that aren't uh, aren't uh, working very well. But uh, still a lot of football left, and uh, still a lot of sunshine on the field. The clouds have parted again, and this. Field is out, and as I said, the temperature at, uh, at game time uh, was 84. It's up to 88 degrees, so I would imagine on the field um, with, with the humidity and everything, it's got to be close to at least over 100 degrees. It feels like on the field probably about 105. And, uh, of course, last night's game postponed till today with the with the monsoon that uh, that hit the, uh, the, the triad. Let's get a word in from Mount Zion before... We begin this second. The board. joy of the whole earth can be found at Mount Zion. Church. The joy of the whole earth can be found at Mount Zion Baptist Church. Play there. The quarterback, Dale, dropped the football. What I thought was a complete pass. He picked it up, threw it, but then the receiver dropped it. They ruled it an incomplete pass. I thought he had possession of it. I, I did, too. I didn't understand it. It looked to me like he took three strides of the football and Second down and 10. Hand off to Sheridan. He's going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage. It's a good play there by the Rams defense. Bring up third down and. Third down and 10. They're going to mark, say he made progress back to the line of scrimmage. So the Rams defense playing tough. But as I said in the, in the first quarter that. Winston-Salem State traditionally has had one of the top-ranked defenses in the country, and we're certainly seeing that today. Joshua Dale. Mount Zion Baptist Church, second quarter here at Bowman Gray Stadium. Winston-Salem State leading UNC Pembroke 7-0. Now Dale being chased in the backfield. He finds an open spot, runs, slides down back at the original line of scrimmage at the 50-yard line, so that will bring up fourth down and 10, and once again, the Braves will have to punt the football away. Yeah, outstanding play there by the defense, and uh, trying to look at the guy's jersey. Uh, uh, Ingram there uh, chased the young man out of the pocket, it looked like. The run Ingram. And uh, forced the slide back to the line of scrimmage, and it's fourth down, and we'll, we'll kick again, or they'll kick again. Jalen Barber. His second year at Winston-Salem State, transferred in from Appalachian State. Great wide receiver for the Rams. A high pun. It's going to be taken. Well, actually, Jalen steps out of the way. Wise decision by Jalen as the football hits at the three-yard line and rolls into the end zone. So with that, the Rams in the first possession here in the second quarter, the Mount Zion Baptist Church second quarter. I'm, I'm going to tell you, Ken, it, it, it is uh, – Cameron Williams, on every punt, looks to be about half a second away from blocking every single punt. Yes, he does. I think he'll get one before the game is over. <laughs> I got that feeling, too. So let's see what the Rams try and do. They've tried to run it up the gut. Really hasn't fit, uh, worked too well, and it looks like um, hopefully he'll line up the He's Linebucker now in the backfield, uh, standing beside Rod Tinsley. Hand off to Jahiz. He sprints to the outside, makes a cut right near the Rams' sideline, and picks up some nice yardage on that play out to the 26-yard line, so a gain of six. Of course they do because they said that play wasn't working. I think Jahiz <laughs> may be a step faster than Carrion. Carrion is more a slant or up-the-middle runner. 
and Drahees has that speed on the sweep. Well, there's no question that the Braves have some beef up there on that line. There's some big boys up there. Second down and four for the Rams at the 26-yard line. Once again, the handoff to Lineberger. He goes straight ahead this time. Nice handoff uh, from, from Rod Tinsley. And he will pick up a yard, so that brings up second down and a long three in the 27. Scott, did you know Mount Zion Baptist Church has an incredible youth education enhancement program that's facilitated by WSSU student volunteers? I did not. Also experienced educators. Tinsley dropping back to pass, complete. At the line of scrimmage, uh, diving actually to make that catch, it looked like it was Omar Baker Jr. I don't think that would be him because he's a defensive back. Actually, Do six. Dejan, uh, six, Jalen Barber. Yeah, that, that pass was right at his shoelaces. He was able to scoop it up and uh, basically fall back the line of scrimmage and the Rams to punt. Yeah, Devin Goebel back to punt. A beautiful snap to Devin. This time he gets a nice punt off. It's going to hit at the 45-yard line and go out of bounds. Let's see where the official mark will be. Yeah, they got to mark it at the 45. So once again, uh, UNC Pembroke has great field position. They weren't able to do anything on their last possession starting at the 50. In fact, they went backwards. 11.33 to play here in this Mount Zion Baptist Church second quarter with the Rams leading 7-0. Yeah, 7 nothing offensively, though. It's been all Rams. Uh, the game started out that way. It's kind of settled down to into, a, into a, a defensive battle here, a trench warfare, and we'll see if the uh, the Braves can muster up much here. Joshua Dell, the quarterback, and it looks like Sheridan in the backfield. Hand off to Sheridan. He picks his way across the 47, 48, up to the, about the 50-yard line. A gain of four yards on that play brings up second down and six. Well, they've had some success on their first and second downs, but third down they've not done a lot of converting thus far. No, no, they haven't. Uh, you know, and that's that's the Rams just playing a playing a very good, smart defensive game. The Rams have stayed out of the penalty box. <laughs> Absolutely. Only, what, a couple penalties thus far. Yeah. Uh, no live stats for the game, so we can't help you out there. This time the pass is complete, and that was a nice reception for the first down. It, it was. There wasn't much room there. I mean, that was like throwing the uh, football right through the tire in the backyard. Yeah, that's the only uh, place he could put it, and, and um, caught there by uh, uh, Hicks for the for the Braves. And Jarrell Bright was all over him, too. Uh, so he just made really a, a good reception there. It's going to be first and 10 at the Rams' 40-yard line, the deepest that Pembroke has been in WSSU territory, if memory serves me correctly. And often my memory does fail. That's what happens when you get old. It is. Of course, you would know about that. Handoff, <laughs> tackled in the backfield for loss of a yard on that play. Sheridan carrying the football. And, uh, and and Josh Jones, a quarterback, if I'm reading this right, 6'3", uh, 220 uh, freshman, you know, so uh, we want him to want the young man to advance his career and gain confidence, maybe just not in this game. Yeah, Dale wasn't <laughs> able to get anything going, so they're going to try Jones. You know, at some point, I guess, as a coach, you just got to figure, you know, you, you can't get worse. So hopefully the young man, you know, he threw that nice strike in there for the uh, – for the last play and uh, see what he does now. Second down and 11, dropping back to pass. Pressure being put on. Lobs one over to Williams. Williams makes the catch at about the 44-yard line. Carries it back to the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage. He'll pick up a yard, but it's still third down and 10 at the 40. It's third and 10, uh, but he's two for two, the quarterback, you know, the, the freshman coming in. So obviously it looks like uh, the Braves are going to let the young man gain experience and get uh, and, and, and get confidence. Hopefully the Rams can uh, a little deflate some of this confidence here where it's an obvious third and ten and a passing opportunity. Rams up 7 nothing with nine minutes to play here in this Mount Zion Baptist Church second quarter. 
Pressure being put on. Pass is complete. Gain of about five yards, still going to leave four, it'd be fourth and five. Dylan Hodges making that catch, carries it down to the 35-yard line, and uh, are they thinking about going for it? Uh, they may try to drive the Rams off sides. Uh, don't see the puncher in at this particular time. No drop kicks? Rarely do you see that. Uh, Can we try anymore. a drop kick? And obviously we can't play it off the netting like indoor football, but uh, yeah, they're going to go for it, Ken. I mean, they're going to give the young man an opportunity to throw the ball again. Well, the Rams haven't been able to do anything since that first series, so I guess they figure they don't have anything to lose. This time the catch is made. It's going to be, I think, it depends on the spot of the football. Uh, the, the catch is made by number three. That's had to put Corey, Corey West. Corey uh, West. It depends on the spot as to whether or not it's going to be a first down. And if it is, it's going to be ever so close. The referee is saying yes, so the gamble paid off for UNC Pembroke. And i got to tell you again, I mean, it, it, it was a, a perfect pass. I mean, there wasn't a lot of room to get that ball in there. And, and the, the freshman's doing a heck of a job threading the needle. He is because, again, uh, the Rams' defense was all over him, putting pressure on him in the backfield. He scrambled a little bit to get that pass off, but it's first and 10 Pembroke at the 30-yard line. Mount Zion Baptist Church, located on File Street here in Winston-Salem, have a pastor's Bible study on Mondays at 7, Wednesdays at noon. Uh, Dr. Churn leading those Bible studies. Looks like we're going to have a timeout. Timeout Braves. So on that note, it's seven to nothing here in beautiful Bowman Gray Stadium, and Ken, you got it brought to you by Mount Zion Baptist Church. Let's see uh, if we can get them pulled up here and hear a word about our friends at Mount Zion Baptist. The joy of the whole earth can be found at Mount Zion Baptist Church at 950 File Street in Winston-Salem. At Mount Zion, you'll find a seven-day-a-week church featuring a child daycare center, a senior daycare center, and a youth enhancement educational program. Pastor Dr. Churn Sr. and First Lady Shirley Churn invite visitors and the WSSU family to join us at Mount Zion Baptist Church located at 950 File Street in Winston-Salem. The joy of the whole earth. Mount Zion Baptist Church, a proud sponsor of the second quarter of Rams football for this 2018 season. Also a special thank you to the Carolina Thunderbirds, our halftime sponsor. Yeah, we uh, we can't, we brought the Zamboni out. I'm not sure why we brought it out, but we have the Zamboni and we'll be uh, Clearing the snow off the uh, the field. Off the field, yeah. getting it nice and smooth. <laughs> I don't think snow would last very long today. Scott. I don't think we. Yeah, we talked about playing an outdoor game here at uh, Historic Bowman Gray. I, I'm not sure I trust the weather here in the south. A little too warm all the time. But uh, regardless, we're ready to ready to replay here after the timeout. 87 degrees. It feels like 98, and probably a few degrees warmer than that on the football field itself. Low snap, hits the ground, picked up. I think that was uh, Sheridan. No, let's see. They've got a new running back in there now. They're going to go with uh, Travis Prince. Prince, who is a redshirt freshman. A lot of freshmen on this football team. I, I think that uh, Penbrook, and why not? I mean, they weren't able to do much the first uh, first three or four series. Why not bring in new guys and let them start playing and see how they do? Second down in five. The deepest that the Braves have been in Rams territory here thus far in the Mount Zion Baptist Church second quarter. Back pass caught. No, knocked down. Great defense by the Rams. That pass intended. To, let's see who, de depending on that play, it looks like it was Dejon Carson. Knocked down in the end zone. And I think it was uh, Carson and, and, and Skinner. Aaron Whitaker, the intended receiver. 
But but a nice pass. I mean, it, it, it was a good defensive play, so the passing there, this young quarterback seems to have a, have a nice knack of putting the ball where it needs to be. They're down in five, and the Rams had good double coverage on the receiver. Josh Jones hands off, and the flag is thrown. Uh, Josh Sheridan, the ball carrier, picks up three yards. He'll be short of the first down. Yeah, thrown by the by, by the back judge. And this could go against Pembroke. Holding that flag is from the spot of the foul. Yeah, number 70 for... Um, Number 70 for Pembroke, uh, Josh King, uh, freshman, Wake Forest, North Carolina. He uh, got caught by the back judge. Happens to be a, a female um, official. And we have them in the way basketball also. Uh, now, instead of being fourth down and two, it's third down and 15. They will replay the football marked at the 35-yard line. But the penalty goes against the Braves, so it's an obviously outstanding call. <laughs> no question about it. I agree. Dan, the oh. quarterback being Jones being pressured, almost sacked back to the 50-yard line this time. Oh, that's got to be ground yeah, uh, intentional grounding. He throws the football into the Rams' sideline. No receiver within 10 or 15 yards. And that will be not only a penalty, but loss of automatic loss of down. It would be fourth down anyhow. Yeah, J- Josh Jones here. I mean, that was a that was a penalty out of uh, out of sure uh, preservation. I mean, <laughs> he had three Rams players uh, chasing him down, and, and uh, instead of taking the sack, he just threw it away. And, and, and he's a freshman. He's playing his first college game. Exactly. I'm assuming a, and, and a freshman so, mistake. Uh, yeah. He he did have Quadrim Williams, a running back at a, the 40 yard line. If he had thrown it just a little bit shorter, I think he could have gotten away with it. Yeah, probably not a dumb penalty to take, Ken. I mean, they they weren't gonna they weren't gonna get the first down. Yeah, they're gonna lose a probably around midfield anyhow. So actually, they gain on that penalty. Yeah, the ball hit the 40 yard line, but it's fourth down and uh, 30. This is definitely a punting situation now. Jalen Barber back to return the punt for the Rams if he can, and it's gonna hit and roll out of bounds at about the two yard line. So an excellent punt. Rams will be pinned deep in our own territory here in this Mount Zion Baptist Church second quarter. And Williams again, uh, just about half a second away from from blocking another one. So you're gonna he's gonna get one. I don't know. Maybe the young man needs to have that extra biscuit uh, for energy in the morning, uh, you know, or a piece of bacon there. But he's uh, he's just a just a step away from blocking one of those punts. Uh, Rod Tinsley will be operating out of the end zone. Scott, at, at Mount Zion Baptist Church, they have a 5.30 p.m. Come as you are, no frill service on Saturday evenings. So once the Rams kick off at 1.30 later in the season, you can come to the football game and then hurry on over to Mount Zion as carry on more. Bounces off of a couple tacklers, still on his feet. Does a little dance, crosses the five-yard line out to the six. A good job by Carrion to pick up yardage when it appeared that he was going to be hemmed in at the line of scrimmage. That might have been the toughest five yards I've seen so far uh, th- th- this football season. The young man knocked backwards into the end zone again, keeps his legs driving, and, 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 and winds up turning a bad play into a good gain here. And uh, real nice job, and obviously you can tell why he's one of the uh, uh, you know leaders on this football club. You're listening to Rams football on the WSSU Rams Sports Network. 7 nothing. the Rams leading with 5.14 to play here in the Mount Zion Baptist Church second quarter. Hand off to carry on Moore. He just drills it across the 10-yard line. Yeah, Moore, Moore using that, uh, that lower body strength fire plug. He's going to come out now, but he, uh, he gains uh, more yardage, and the Rams are about third and two, two and a half maybe. And uh, we'll see what they do. And, of course, don't forget they're back in their own territory at the 10-yard line. Third down and short. Jahiz Lineberger gets the handoff. Jahiz finds an opening. He's crossing 15. Still on his feet at the 20, 25, 30 before he's pushed out of bounds at the Rams. Oh, they're going to say he stepped out at about the 27. So that's going to be a first down. Absolutely first down. And, and the young man, 
you know, kind of got pushed from behind, so he lost his balance there. But he was about three strides, and he would have been gone down the field. Ken, I mean, real nice run in there, and it looks like the running game may have uh, be coming together for the uh, the offense. John, he's a transfer in from Lenore Bryan. He's from Hickory, a junior. Great speed on the outside. Tinsley under center this time, hands off to Lineberger. He's across the 32 out to about the 34 yard line. We got a ram slow to get up there. 53. And he's not going to be able to get off the field, Ken. They're going to call a uh, official's time. Justin over. Martinez. And again, he is one of the anchors on that Rams offensive line. So we've lost Devontae Mackey and now Justin Martinez. Those are two critical players on that Rams offensive line. Looks like he's, I mean, he might be just be cramping up there, Ken. They're, they're, they're administrating water to him. I hope that's all it is because it is hot, folks. I mean, it, it's for those of you from the south, you're used to this. For some of us bigger guys, and these uh, linemen are bigger guys, uh, yeah, he's got a cramp is all that is. And, and, and so it's got to be over 100 degrees on the field right now. As Ken had mentioned earlier, it's over. It feels like about 98 degrees. It's uh, it's about 82, or I'm sorry, 85 degrees here with the temperature-wise. But humidity, and don't forget the field. It is humid and, and, and soaked from last night's rainstorm, but uh, young man will get some fluid in him, pop a couple Gatorades, and, and away you go. So the Rams now second, and I'm going to call it five and a half. Of course, I can't see. I used to be a pro hockey referee. So. <laughs> and every call you made was wrong. Yes, it in was. In somebody's eyes. Yes. Lineberger. Tries to break around the left side of the field on the sweep out of the backfield. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Well defended that time by the Braves, and it's going to bring up a third down and long for the Rams. About third down and six. The football marked at the Rams' 33-yard line here in the Mount Zion Baptist Church second quarter. 7 nothing Rams up. Over at UNC Pembroke, Rams scored on the first offensive drive of the game, and since then, neither team's been able to fit together very much. Tinsley looking to pass. Oh, all over. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that was a good decision. I, I think that uh, maybe he should have gone to Drahees Lineberger, who was open. Yeah, he threw right into coverage there, and, and excellent coverage. And it looked like Darren Dowdle uh, was the intended receiver, but with that, uh, Goble back in to punt once again. So, again, the Rams not able to move the football. This time a nice, booming, nice long kick. punt. Fair catch called for by Pembroke. It bounces, and it's going to roll all the way back to the 17-yard line. So I know his parents are feeling pretty proud right, right now after he got off to a shaky start. And, you know, just credit that to the first time a young man has ever punted in college. A little nerves. Well, a little nerves. And, 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 again, we were supposed to play the game last night. And, and I know as a, as a former athlete, and it, your mindset was it's opening, you know, opening night or opening, you know, opening weekend and we're ready to go. And then to have the, the game delayed 15 hours. I, I think last night, I don't know how many of these young men got a good night's sleep. I think most of them were probably, you know, uh, tossing and turning all night. For the second night in a row. Yeah, you're right, because I'm <laughs> sure they were like that. So a uh, little bit of Bobby Darren there, tossing and turning all night. and uh, But um, I'm sure the nerves have left the uh, left them by now. Dale back in as a quarterback. This time the handoff is to number 41. Not on the depth chart, so this is a new runner for. Yeah, that's uh, McKinley Nelson. He's a freshman from uh, Monroe, uh, North Carolina. Played uh, Monroe High School, and and Ken, as he said, I I think the Braves have basically uh, sent you a very poor depth chart, and are <laughs> they are out to are to scuttle your broadcast. But I I think that they've just decided we're going to go with freshmen. I mean, yeah, they're going to play. We're a young team, and we're going to let the young young kids play. Brings up second down in a passing situation. And it's going to be 
I was looking down at the depth chart. Oh, they're calling it a catch. You know what? Oh. Real nice throw. I'm surprised he got the foot, the, the feet down. It looked like he was out of bounds. To Sean Carter with a catch, apparently able to keep it, keep his feet in bounds. A, a, a real nice throw. And I'm getting more and more impressed by Josh Jones, the quarterback now. I'm sorry, that's not Josh that's Jones. It's, a a, it's a Josh Dale, right? Flags are thrown, and let's see who this is going to go against. If it's against the Rams, it will be a first down. But they're calling a false start on UNC Pembroke. Yes, Josh Dale, the, the freshman, every pass he's made has been right on the money there. And uh, unfortunately, that offside is going to negate a nice pass and a nice game. Going to bring up about third and seven, third and eight. But uh, this this young Josh Dale quarterback is going to be pretty good for this uh, Braves team. So, so the ball resting Third about to down at about eight. That's scrambling. a hole. He's going to slip and brought down at the eight yard line. Yeah, that's a that's a nice sack there by uh, ninety eight. They need bigger numbers for us old people so we can see what's on the jersey there. So that's no, no question about that. And it would be nice to have all the entire roster on one Carry on Jeter, who's a sophomore from Winston-Salem, went to Mount Tabor. You probably saw him play as a high school. I have. Karan, uh, Mount Tabor traditionally has a, an and, and, and outstanding a, football program. And, and the Braves line there, uh, they, they got a little, little bit outclassed there. It was a holding, an obvious holding tackle. <laughs> <laughs> the offense that the officials didn't catch, but, you know, the football gods get made it right. So back to punt. Jalen Barber and Darius Skinner both standing in Braves territory. This time the punt is taken by Darius Skinner. He's across the 50, brought down at about the 46-yard line. So the Rams have excellent field position here in the Mount Zion Baptist Church second quarter, leading 7 to nothing. with 38 seconds to play here in the quarter. Skinner did a nice job. He did not have a lot of uh, open space there, Ken, and, and, and real nice moves. I haven't seen dance moves like that, you know, since uh, I saw you on the on the dance floor. The guy's got some good hips going left and right there and, and able to, to pick up about 10 yards after the catch. Speaking of me being on the dance floor, I am an incredible fan of World of Dance on NBC, and let me tell you, Scott, some of those moves those dancers make, there aren't enough chiropractors in North Carolina to get my body back in shape. Rod Tinsley going to be sacked at the 44-yard line. Yeah, that was just a flat, ugly missed assignment. He didn't even know the the, uh, the player was there. That's Tyler Hilton. H H uh, Hitton uh, came in. He's a uh, red, red shirt senior? No, the rookie senior. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the From Flockway. Flockway Verena? Yes. I don't know what that name is. It must be some kind of a North Carolinian name. The clock running down. I think the Rams may be content to go into the locker room with a seven to nothing lead. Boy, that game went. That I almost said period. That quarter went by fast. And it's in the record books. That's the end of the Mount Zion Baptist Church second quarter with the Rams leading 7 nothing. Both teams will head to the locker room on this hot, humid Sunday afternoon from Bowman Gray Stadium. We're going to send it back to our WTOB studios for a message from uh, the Carolina Thunderbirds and Mountain Fried Chicken. Coming up, the Carolina Thunderbirds halftime show.
get ready for Stokely. It's Stokely, a big condition. With special guest, Midnight Star. The Uptown Swagger Band. Just watch. DJ Adam P and DJ Versailles. Don't miss the Rams Music Super Lounge. October 19th, 9 p.m. at the Benton Convention Center. Get tickets online at wssu.edu slash tickets for the Winston-Salem State University Box Office. Presented by r, &R Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? This is announcement for the Horns members. All Horns members will be recognized at the next home game. All Horns members will be recognized on the next home game for the Rams, which will be next week. Thank you. And we appreciate your support.
We're just about ready for the beginning of the third quarter. We'd like to remind you, at Village Tavern, the Department of Athletics would like to thank Mr. Anthony Bonner and Village Tavern at Renault Village for being a proud sponsor of WSSU Athletics. We appreciate all that you do at Village Tavern. We're just about ready for the beginning of the third quarter. Second half and kicking off. Number 31. Oh. UNC Pembroke. Uh, and they keep putting all these new players in on their depth chart. Uh, Let's see, with number 31. Uh, here's a kickoff. It's going to be taken at about the two yard line and racing at the 30, 35, 40 on the far sideline. And that's Jahiz Lineberger with a great kickoff return Scott Brand for the Rams as we open this third quarter. Well, I would say he definitely found a hole and in, in, in shot right up the uh, the field there. And, and uh, there's a young man down the uh, down around where the ball was picked up yet for the Rams. Uh, I don't know if uh, medical knows knows yet, but uh, what what an outstanding run back. Trying to see who it is. Uh, we cannot see his number right now, but he's holding his left knee. Yeah, it looks like a, a knee injury, and I, I failed to see what happened. It look, kind of looked like it happened right behind the play.
but what an amazing run back. You know, Drahees Leinberger showing that breakaway speed that he has, and he just really just uh, was a bullet down that uh, UNC Pembroke sideline, brings the football all the way out to the 42-yard line. So Winston-Salem State will have excellent field position to start off this third quarter. And again, a special thank you, Scott Brand, to you and the Carolina Thunderbirds for sponsoring our halftime show. and. And for the great partnership that we have established uh, when I reached out to you last year, uh, you know, you, you were just arms wide open. Well, no, we, we appreciate it. First of all, we want to be part of the community as, as the only uh, triad's only professional hockey team. And, and we've had a great partnership. Uh, it's been a reciprocal with, uh, with the Rams here. And so we look forward to that uh, c continuing on. And uh, it, it's fun to see our uh, our guys go out and watch their first football and basketball games, and it's fun to watch a lot of your guys come and see their first hockey game. Yeah, folks, I just wish you could come and see the players from both teams when they experience this for the first time. It's, it's just absolutely incredible. And, of course, anytime any of the hockey players, as they come to town, they're more than welcome to come to the football games. Uh, just let me know. Jalen Barber with the ball. Going to be close to the 50-yard line as he breaks away. Sweeps to the left side. And, and, and that was Roosevelt Appleton, by the way, fans, back in the backfield. Uh, got up kind of holding his wrist there a little bit, so uh, um, he seems to be okay. They're, they're checking out the wrist, but he seems to be fine. But a nice pickup there on the first play of the uh, second half, uh, and it's second and about uh, three and a half. Maybe four, we'll call it. You know, uh, Coach Bullwear in the media conference last week talked about uh, 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 Roosevelt Appleton being one of the key people uh, or newcomers on this team this year as Terry Amore is given the football on the carry up the middle and he brings it into Braves territory at the 49-yard line. Be third and one. Third down and a very short one. So do they give it the obvious one? I, I, if... I'm a betting person. I give it to carry on, and that's exactly what they do. Flags fly, and this will be five yards coming up against somebody. Ball start on the Rams, so that will bring it back five yards. Only the third penalty of the football game for Winston-Salem State. Third down and six. So now I guess we go back into a possible passing situation. Although you do have more in the backfield, and he's more than capable of uh, of gaining you five yards when you need it. Possibly six, it looks like, a little bit. Will Walton, uh, our leading receiver back from last year, returning from last year, I should say, uh, on the left side of the football field. Three receivers on the right side. Rod Tinsley looking. The pass juggled by Will. Cannot hang on to it. Falls incomplete. And I do believe it was at the 50-yard line, and uh, uh, defenders all over Will. I don't think he would have picked up the first down, even if he caught it, because he was having to look back. Yeah, a little bit, a uh, little bit thrown behind him there. So the uh, the Rams will have to punt this one away. Um, and uh, so far, their punter's done a nice job in the last three kicks. Devin uh, Goble like gets nice this punt. one off. Oh, a nice kick, fair catch called for at the 10, 11 yard line. And Pembroke will take over from deep in its own territory. It's Logan McFadden calling for the fair catch. Now he's also listed as a quarterback. He's uh, a freshman from Catawba, South Carolina. Well, it's old school football here, Ken. You gotta play, be a two way player, it looks like. But, uh, and, and by the way, the, the crowd across from us looks decent, but, but, but underneath this, absolutely packed in here. So the, the free ticket and the free, uh, the free parking uh, might be the way to go. Good to see these people come out. Unfortunately, we need a little revenue to keep the well, football program going. Particularly to pay your, your large salary. Exactly. Your, you know, it costs a lot to write those checks for zero, zero, zero. Your $2 million over 200 years. The handoff, I believe that was Sheridan, uh, surrounded by red jerseys. And yeah. He's not going to get much, if anything. Looks like a loss. A couple yard loss. We'll call it second down and 12. The football now should be at about the nine yard line. 
But Josh Jones is still at quarterback since they made the switch, Ken, and, and, and they appear to be lined up for a passing play, and, and he's got a nice arm, so uh, we'll see what Jones can do. He's, uh, you know, the, he's, he's close to his own end zone, so they got to be careful he can't scramble too much. Well, he's got Sheridan in the backfield, but obviously passing, and this time great coverage that time. Yep. Let's see who that was at, uh, for the Rams. Great coverage by... Dejon Carson, the junior from Washington, D.C., as all over the intended receiver. Yeah, if that would have gone towards the, uh, if that would have gone towards pass interference, I wouldn't have been overly shocked. But nice play he got in there, and you're right, he wrapped him up well, but uh, kind of a, a tough pass, but Jones didn't have anywhere to really throw the ball to. Jalen Nixon, the intended receiver, third down and 12. It broke at its own 10-yard line, lead, uh, trailing 7 nothing, with 11.44 to play here in the third quarter. And this time, Jones dropped for, I think, maybe another loss. Yeah, it, it's going to be a loss. the five-yard line and making the tackle, Jack Nimmons. The senior from Reedsville, Jack has just been all over the field this afternoon. Jones got chased out of the pocket there, and and and, and, and thought he, I thought he was going to have a nice play. He tried to step up. I think he realized he was over the line of scrimmage, and then he ran into his own player, and at that point just fell down. But uh, we could very easily see a safety here if this uh, if this uh, hike is high, like the first two of the game were. Third sack of this football game for Jack Nimmons. And it is. And it's <laughs> they hike it out of the end zone. It's going to roll on to the asphalt track just in front of the field house here at Bowman Gray Stadium and the Rams are now up nine to nothing. I guess you could call me a uh, clairvoyant. Boy. And and I don't know if that was on purpose because that that snap was so bad I, I gotta think it was on purpose um, you know to, to take the safety and then get the free kick but uh, that was uh, that, the, the punter didn't even jump up to make an attempt to catch the ball kid. I mean, you think that was on purpose? I mean, to me, <laughs> it couldn't be. Nothing could be that bad. You're looking back in the first quarter. The snaps were very high uh, to the punter in the first two punting situations. But it, it's one of those situations, you know, looking back, when you know that the snap has been high, do you risk possibly going over his head and just landing in the end zone, giving the Rams an opportunity to fall in for a touchdown, or are you just gambling, say, hey, let's get it out of there, give him two, because there's still a lot of time to play, 10-56 here in the third quarter. Rams up 7 nothing. Now, now the kickoff normally is from what yard line? I apologize for not knowing this. Uh, 35. So so on, on, on the safety here, they'll, they'll punt from the 20 or kick from the 20. He has his choice, right? He has his choice of, of uh, using the tee or or punting. I would think that using the tee would get the ball farther. A drop kick, as some people would say, as he stands on the 15-yard line, gets it away. Caught at the 30 by Jaheez Leinberger. Stutter step, slows down about the 40, then puts it into gear and gets it up to the 50-yard line. So, so the Rams will have outstanding field position. You're right, about the 50, 51, yard, no, 51. 50 or 49 <laughs> yard line. Still learning this, fans. It's been 34 years since I've done a football game. Uh, the 51. You know, I was at a high school game uh, several years ago, and they had the 50, the 30, the 40, the 20, the 10, and the and goal, and that uh, they had mistakenly and didn't catch it until game time, just before the game. And somebody says, "Hey, wait a minute! You got the 30 at the 40, the 40 at the 30." First and 10 heads to 50. Time travel. Passing New line. quarterback for the Rams. Flags are thrown. This could be a holding and dragged down at the line of scrimmage. And, it's, uh, and that's Amir Scaff. He's a graduate transfer from Georgia State getting his first snap in a Rams uniform. He looks like a linebacker. <laughs> he does. He's huge. Well, let's see what his size. Amir is 6'2", 230 pounds. He's from Charlotte. Holding. 
but holding against the Rams, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul will bring it back to the 40. Yeah, so that's uh, that, that'll negate uh, a, a play that was kind of broken up. It looked like he dropped back to pass and, and had some pressure on him, and uh, obviously he did because the Rams had to take a penalty to prevent him from getting sacked. Second down and 20, Will Walton, Quincy Jackson, the two wide receivers for the Rams. I think this is obviously a passing situation. Instead, they're going to hand it off to carry on more. Carry on's going to just uh, plow and dance and bulldoze and whatever else up to the 44 yard line. That brings up second down. That's going to wait a minute now. Come on, Mr. Referee. He marked it back at the 42. I disagree with that spot. Yeah, yeah, we got a little bit of a. a, a, of a a little bit of the uh, short end of the, uh, the yard mm. stick there, but uh, it's still about second, second and 15. Down, second down and 18. 18, is that what they're calling it? And we got a Whistles penalty coming up on the Braves for too many men on the ice or field, I guess <laughs> is the case would be. <laughs> or delay a game. Illegal participation. Is that what they call it now? It's saying yes. too many men. Yes, it would be illegal participation. You know, Five-yard penalty, so the Rams are getting back closer to the original line of scrimmage. It would, second down and 12. It'd be a shame to squander an opportunity when the gr drive starts at midfield. Another passing Step play. back, looking. Pins it. Uh, just threads a needle to Quincy Jackson at the 42-yard line, and that's going to be about... Let's see where they're going to mark it. We'll see. It's going to be close to a first down. And that's They're calling it a first down. First okay. down. The linesman is saying yes. It's a first down. At the 39, we were blocked out by the Rams players to see exactly where he stepped out of bounds on the near sideline. But a great reception by Quincy Jackson, and that's the second big catch that he's made in this football game. The first one led to the Rams' only touchdown in the game. And hurry up offense here. The Rams are lined up trying to get the playoff right away. 9-0 Rams up here in the second quarter. Uh, the pass from Neff intended to, or Skip rather intended to. Devon Hayes of, uh, of, of the Braves there got a, a free shot at the quarterback. Nobody uh, laid, a, uh, laid a shoulder up or any a body on him, I guess we can call it, same as hockey, and and, and uh, got a great uh, run right at the quarterback, quarterback at the forced throw. And, uh, and uh, we're second and 10. Cameron Williams, the intended receiver. Hand off to carry on more. He finds a little bit of room and carries it down to the 35 yard line. Yeah, he only had to carry three guys with him on that play, Ken. <laughs> Coming out of the backfield. He averaged 5.5 yards a carry in the first half. Uh, net gain of 44 yards this time. Picks up about four yards, so it will be third down and six. The Rams with a little confusion on their substitution here, I, I guess, and uh, what they're going to play. Uh, and they're, they're going without a huddle. Maybe they don't huddle anymore. I miss football that much. But, well, uh, uh, Detroit means the offensive coordinator said he would like to up the tempo just a little bit. Uh, this time, Scab dropped for a loss back at the 43-yard line. Yeah, he, he set up the pass, had his feet moving uh, a little bit, but couldn't find a receiver. And that will end the uh, the offensive threat of the uh, of the Rams here. Bring up fourth down and in about 14 or 15, and uh, Rams will pump right away. Devin <laughs> Goble, this one is a uh, flag is thrown. I, I wouldn't be Whistles shocked. are blowing. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if this is uh, if they have movement. False start on the Rams. Let's see the linesman making the call, telling the referee. We'll wait for the official signal for the man wearing the white hat. The illegal substitution well, against Winston-Salem State. Now a five-yard penalty brings the football back to the 48-yard line, and this time Devin, the sophomore from nearby Pilot Mountain, will be punting from his own 35-yard line. Nice snap, nice twist and turn of the ball, high booming punt, fair catch call for at about the 12 yard line by the Braves. So again, Devin has pinned them deep in their own territory. Yeah, another nice punt. 
by the young man. Uh, you're right, the first one, probably a little nerves. Uh, after Afterwards, he's been doing very well. Uh, the Rams with a 9 to nothing lead. Uh, touchdown and a safety. You know his dad is a Baptist minister. That's correct. And uh, he had to call in. Uh, he was he's talking to him this afternoon before the game started. He said, my son's first start, I was not going to miss it. So I called the church and said, hey, I won't be there tomorrow morning. Pass incomplete. incomplete. That pass was intended to Tyshawn Carter. And, and, and Ken, is my, are my eyes right? Is it uh, Josh Dale back in? It looks like it's quarterback. Dale. It is. So they've been alternating quarterbacks here in the football game. And, you know, uh, Scott, my philosophy, I don't like alternating quarterbacks. I don't think either one has an opportunity to get into a rhythm. No, I don't either. And I, I got to be honest, I'm impressed with Josh Jones and, and his play and, and his, his, uh, his passing prowess. Dale with the handoff dropped in the backfield by big number 94 for the Rams. And, and I think as a player, Ken, you, you sense when you have a guy that's a good leader and uh, and not taking nothing away from Mr. Dale. I think, you know, he's, he's probably got um, he got time to develop. But, uh, you know, with, with, uh, with Jones out there, they seem to have a little bit more confidence. Tyron Roberts on the tackle. Loss of four yards on that play brings up third down and 14. But but don't give don't take anything away from the Rams defense. They've been pretty really good this game. Neither team has been able to generate anything on offense since the first drive of the football game by uh, WSSU. Yeah. Delay of game now against uh, Pimbro. Will move the football back even farther. So. You know, they're almost in the same territory where they hiked the ball out of the end zone for the safety on yeah. the previous possession. You know. It's marked back now at the four-yard line, uh, maybe the five. No four. They're going to mark it at the four. And so it's third down and uh, 10, uh, 15, about 20. Well, now, if you're Rams, obviously you don't want to give up the big play here, but uh, I'm, I'm sure a couple of the defenders are thinking safety right now. Dale looking to pass, find some running room, slides uh, down at the 10-yard line. He, he wasn't going to make the first down, Ken, but it's unfortunate there. That's, that's a field tackle there. Obviously, with the rain last night, the, the, the field kind of reached up and tackled him there, and a piece of sod came out, it looks like. But... Uh, 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 nice job of the Rams uh, preventing any uh, any opportunity to pass the ball. Yeah, the key thing is he picks up five yards, so the punter, instead of standing on the uh, line behind the, just under the goal post, now has about five yards uh, to operate with in the end zone as he gets ready to punt. Oh. And this one. No flag did I see. Uh, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah Parks there, the, the punter, a very poor acting job, will not be nominated for the Academy Award. Uh, the, uh, the Rams player uh, went by him, did not touch him. Maybe the wind may have got him, but uh, will not be nominated this year for an Academy Award. And thus, Awful dive. thus far, <laughs> the wind is not considered to be a part of the play. Uh, maybe the young man would consider enrolling at the UNC School of the Arts, which is just uh, about a mile from the stadium, and take some acting classes. Rams with the football. Carry on Moore drives his way down to the... 35 yard line before he is pushed back. Well, I think the official may hit the whistle a little bit too quick there because he was able to spin away right when the whistle uh, went. I, I thought he was still moving his feet. And, and moving I did too, forward. and I think Carrion told the, the, the official too. If you looked at him when he looked at the referee, he said, hey, give me a break. I was still going. Yeah. So they're going to put it at the 33-yard line, second down in the short two. Scaff, the quarterback, finds an open Quincy Jackson on the far side of the field at about the 24-yard line. And, and, and Scaff's a left-handed thrower, and he kind of throws sidearm. And we have two left-handed quarterbacks this year. 
But he's got that nice start on throwing. Of course, of course, the Rams, again, hurry up offense down here late. They, they aren't huddling. They're lining right up. They're getting their calls from the uh, from the sidelines. And, and, and again, looks like another pass play. First down for the Rams at the 24-yard line. Carry on Moore straight ahead. Powers his way down inside the 20 to about the 17. Just glad I'm not calling a defense for uh, for the Braves because they had me thinking they were going to continue to pass the ball. Young man's got a cannon. He throws it low, though, with that sidearm delivery. Yes, he sure does. He's a graduate transfer. Got some real nice size to him. Second down and six. This time he's going to hang on to the football. Fumbles it, and it's going to be recovered by a bunch of jerseys. Pembroke is saying they have it. Let's see what the referee says. Pretty sure Pembroke has this one. Look like a pretty clean fumble. Decision. Look like a pretty clean fumble. Look like uh, the white landed on the ball, and, and, and just couldn't get the ball tucked away, Ken. And that is the first turnover of the football game for Winston-Salem State. So each team now with the turnover. The Rams had the interception in the first quarter. Four minutes and nine seconds to play here, here in the third quarter, nine nothing, Rams up. Touchdown point after kick, and then the safety by UNC Pembroke when they hiked it out of the end zone onto the track. But Pembroke, they're, they're, they're starting from their, uh, looks like their 12 yard line, 13 yard line, so they got quite a ways to go up the field, and I can't tell who they have a quarterback. I think they've switched back again to Josh Jones. Is that? Can't tell. Uh, official timeout. Uh -oh. so the trainer is out talking to the referee. I'm not sure what this is about, but she's talking to two of the officials now. Four Can minutes and nine seconds to play. Uh, a special thank you to the Carolina Th Thunderbirds for sponsoring our halftime show here on the WSSU Ram Sports Network. Also, a shout out and a thank you to Community Tanks and Payroll Solutions, owned by a WSSU alumnus for sponsoring the first quarter. Folks, if you're like me, you need all the help you can get in preparing your income taxes. Call the folks over at Community. Taxes are completed by an enrolled agent. Phone number 336-813-7311. And, of course, our second quarter is sponsored by Mount Zion Baptist Church, featuring an outstanding youth education enhancement program staffed partly by WSSU student volunteers. The Saturday night comes to our no Frills church service at 5.30. Of course, Sunday morning services and Sunday school. Bible study on Mondays at uh, 6.30 and Wednesdays at noon. Pass is complete, breaks a tackle, pushed out of bounds. That reception is made by number 84 for UNC Pembroke, and that's Aaron Whitaker. I was trying to see what the timeout was about. There appears to be a, 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 one of the medical staff was talking to the referee. I don't know if the referee's dehydrated or, or just kind of give them a warning. I mean, it, it is awfully warm here, fans. It is. Put the McLeod with the tackle for the Rams. First down and 10 for the Braves. The handoff to number 37 at Sheridan. He gets some... Nice yardage on that play brings it out to the 27-yard line. A gain of five yards on that play will be second down and five, a very long five. You, you know who I got to give credit to is, is the mascot. I mean, that poor guy's been in, or girl has been in the uh, the Rams uh, outfit dancing and uh, wearing that uh, tremendous. Uh, Rack uh, on your head, uh, it's got to be hot. Can you imagine the poundage of sweat inside of it? Yeah. <laughs> Pass is complete, but falling down right at the line of scrimmage. Looks like number 81 for Pembroke. And and that was Jones's first really, I thought, poor pass. He passed behind the uh, intended receiver. But, but you know, it, it wouldn't have mattered because there was uh, the Rams are right there. They're doing a nice job of picking up the uh, picking up the passing plays. Jalen Nixon, the intended receiver, third down 
We'll call it third down and five. Let's see if Jones can work any magic on this play. We certainly hope not. Dropping back to pass. It's going to be knocked away on the far sideline, I believe. Oh, it's complete. It looked like the pass from this angle was knocked away. I thought it was by incomplete Terrell too. Fleming. And they're going to call it a first down. I, I, I give Jones credit. I don't know how he got it. I don't either because Fleming was right there on the play, and it certainly looked like that uh, he had knocked the football away from this angle. Like sometimes it's tough to see on that far sideline. All the jerseys just kind of mingle together, but it's a first down for Pembroke, and they keep this, this – uh, Drive alive, and now the quarterback is going to tuck the ball, keep it, run out of bounds. He'll pick up a couple of yards. And the uh, the Rams are going to substitute fly players, so a little bit change in personnel here. So we're going to see what uh, what the Braves do next. No gain in that play. You said second and ten. Nine nothing here from beautiful Bowman Gray in a hot. Uh, Sunday afternoon. Whitney McLeod standing in Jones' way on that last play, forcing him out of bounds. No gain. Second down and well, second down and nine. Technically, it's a yard gain if the down marker is moved on this side. Pass is complete, and bringing it out to about the 43-yard line is going to be number 85 for Pembroke. Uh, and it was a it was a a little bit of a razzle dazzle play. Jones got the snap. He he's working on the shotgun shotgun formation. Did a uh, did a 360 turn around and uh, hit his receiver, who picked up the uh, the 10 yard gain and uh, or nine yard gain and uh, first down ball sitting at the 44 yard line. Quay threat the receiver on that play, and I tell you, Pembroke has not really complied with their depth chart that they've provided this afternoon. I think that should be a fine. I'm sure in the Federal Hockey League that you would be fined if you didn't oh, do absolutely. that. Oh, absolutely. Well, a handoff to Sheridan. He's going to go nowhere on that play. Well, and this is where I this is where I guess I don't understand football. You had, you know, uh, some this, this young quarterback here has done a nice job of, of, of putting the uh, putting the uh, the, the ball where it needs to go, and and uh, and they, they run where up the middle, and, and the Rams the, the Rams control the middle of the field at this point. I mean, there hasn't been much that's gotten through. So, and uh, I do believe that will be the final play here in the third quarter. They may try to get one off. Five seconds, two seconds, one second. Nope, they're going to let the third quarter run out, and with that. We're going to take a break and send it back to the WTOB studios for a word from the Winston Lake Golf Course and Flo Auto. 9 nothing Rams on top of UNC Pembroke. You're watching and listening to Rams football on the WSHU Rams Sports Network. Drive among the Dolphins at A proud sponsor of Winston-Salem State University Athletics. Get ready for Stokely. It's Stokely, the mid condition. With special guest, Midnight Star. The Uptown Swagger Band. Just once, DJ Adam T. and DJ Versailles. Don't miss the Rams Music Super Lounge. October 19th, 9 p.m. at the Benton Convention Center. Get tickets online at wssu.edu slash tickets for the Winston Salem State University box office. Presented by r, &R Productions. McGray Stadium, Ken Winfrey and Scott Brandt filling in for the working Alan Chavis on this Sunday afternoon. Winston-Salem State with a 9-0 lead. A hot, humid afternoon, 86 degrees. Feels like 93 with the humidity of 62%. And Scott, right now, there is a thunderstorm in Louisville, which is only about 15 miles from this stadium. And that's just uh, that's just what it feels like here in the broadcast booth, Ken. I mean, on the field, it's, it's, it's definitely warmer, but uh, we're about ready to start the fourth period or quarter, as they say in football. 
Thunderstorms also in rural hall, which is up closer to where I live. Sheridan, the ball carrier, brings the football into Rams territory at the 49. A gain of seven yards on that play. Third down in three. Monty Freeman on the tackle for the Rams. Yeah, Ken, if you look to the north, you can definitely see that it would appear that there it is raining in your neck of the woods. A heavy rain and a lot of lightning also associated with that storm. And I'm about uh, 20 minutes from the stadium. Rams trying to draw UNCP offsides. I uh, don't think it was successful. Shared in the ball carrier once again. and So, so this should bring up fourth and about one. You're at the, uh, they're in the uh, offensive territory. So, Ken, what are you going to do here? Oh, we got a player down. Yeah, number 35 down for the Rams right oh, now. Back That's up. Najee Tucker. We need Najee. I'm glad to see him up and off. Trainers out there just in case. Head tackle to run Ingram. Redshirt sophomore, 6'2", 250 pounds. He just wrapped his arms around Sheridan. Stopped him from making that first down. You know, the Rams offense has, has not exactly been on fire in this football game. I think I punt well, in this particular situation. That's why you're up here. Pin them deep. It would appear a passing play, shotgun formation. Is that Jones, a quarterback? Fumble, oh, fumble on the play. Rams recover. Let's see who comes up with it. 46, 16, 15. 15, number 15 for the Rams comes up with it. That is Patrick Green. Now, Patrick Green, uh, Scott, I have seen him play since he was a freshman at North Forsyth High School. Really? I know the young man and his parents uh, extremely well. Every time Patrick sees me, he gives me a big hug. I had to tell him, no, don't squeeze too hard because these old bones are getting brittle and Patrick graduated from East Carolina last uh, spring scap back in gets a pass completed still on his feature he's Lineberger he's gonna carry it down into Pembroke territory at the 32 yard line boy what a what a, what a nice play nice uh, nice pass there and, and and almost you know uh, almost picked off just over the defender's head and it winds up with about a what 27 yard game it yeah, seems like down to the 30 34-yard line of UNC Pembroke. Well, uh, Rams are looking more alive right now than they've looked in a while. This time, Scott just overthrows the intended receiver, uh, Darren Dowdle. And he got rushed in a pass a little bit there, was feeling a little pressure, and uh, and, and I think threw off his uh, – didn't throw off the right foot and uh, obviously re led the receiver way too far. Well, it is good to see number 53, Justin Martinez, back on the field. You know, he came out in the first half. Uh, limping and Justin will be a key to this offensive line success this season so great to see him back on the field Quincy Jackson in as a receiver the ball batted down escaped trying to throw it over a couple of uh, Pembroke defenders who were putting some pretty good pressure on so the Rams, after picking up the large gain, is now three and uh, third and ten. They're down in ten. Alex Richardson and also Tay Vereen ball combining to knock that ball down. Ball at the 31. Carry on more in the backfield for the Rams. Three receivers on the, uh, on the right side here. Uh, Whistles blow. Timeout. Winston-Salem State. Yeah, I wonder if they're, actually, I think they're about to run out of time. 12.57 to play in this football game. Rams up 9 to nothing. The Rams scored the only touchdown on the opening drive of the football game. The big play in that particular drive was the Rod Tinsley connecting up with Quincy Jackson on a 51-yard pass to set the Rams up on the six-yard line, and then carry on Moore carried it in for the touchdown, safety in the third quarter, I think almost an intentional safety in the humble opinion of your broadcasters up here high above the football field in the broadcast suite. 
And the Rams a 9 nothing lead. Well, 57 to play. I hope it was intentional. I would like to think that no center would, <laughs> would center the ball that awful. <laughs> you know, had the, uh, had the punter been standing underneath the goal post, that would have been uh, uh, through the goal post. I think the punter would have been standing in the balcony of the <laughs> where the <laughs> chancellor watches the game to get that one. So third and ten here. See if the Rams can... Uh, and gain a necessary yard. They would have charged him $1,000 for the uh, Horns Club membership. The pass is complete, getting away down to the 30, 25, 26 yard line. That pass is complete from Scaff. Yeah, Luke, Luke Brooks couldn't get his hands, get, couldn't get his uh, arms around the. Uh, the Jonathan the Allen making the catch. It's going to be fourth down and three, and obviously the Rams are going to go for it. And, uh, and 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 Rams player just too strong breaks the uh, the tackle, and you're right. It's about fourth and what are you going to call it? Fourth and two, fourth and three. Fourth and three, the football at the 26 yard line. Carry on Moore's going to get the uh, pass. Does a 360, finds some running room. He's at the 10, the five, touchdown, Winston Salem State. What an incredible run. Can, I, I'm thinking he's going to get caught in the backfield. He stops. Does the spin. Does the spin. He stopped. I think he may change uh, a dime left nine cents and, and, and does the spin and really walked into the end zone. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody was so shocked by the by, by the young man's running prowess. It was uh, really nice to see and, and a nice play, and uh, let's hope we get the extra point here. 26 yards out. Carrion picks up his second touchdown of the football game. In fact, the only they're missing the kicking tee. Only two touchdowns for the Rams, but we're up now 15 to nothing with 12:04 to play. Pavel Buitaventura in. The kick is up, and there's a flag on the play as Pavel hits the turf. Well, first of all, they didn't bring the kicking tee out, so that's. Personal foul, roughing the kicker against Pembroke. So we had a lot of things going on there, Ken. The, yeah. the Rams didn't bring the kicking tee out. That, that's not excusable, number one. Number two, they kicked it right as the clock expired, and I think that the Zebras are, are, are maybe discussing that too. Uh, so, so that's number two. Now they can't go back and change it at this point in time. And number three, the guy ran in a kicker. I mean, uh, just because I think he, it looked to me like he got across the line kind of quick here. So they're talking to an official. The referee is talking to one of the officials in the end zone about what I have no idea. I don't know if those are extra officials or what they do. So. But, uh, yeah. Evidently, they've spotted lightning. Spotted lightning, and I think that's what he was. The referee was talking to the gentleman uh, from the. Uh, let's see if I can tell who that is down in the end zone. Well, and you know what? That's the same gentleman that talked to the referees earlier on that official's timeout. It must be the weather spotter. They were going to say, and, and Ken, I did see lightning to the to the to the north of us a little bit. And standing, uh, he was actually talking to James Dubose, the associate athletics director for external affairs. And what they're doing is asking everyone to evacuate the stadium. Uh, lightning has been detected 4.3 miles from the stadium. And any time that lightning was in within eight miles, then normally the game is halted. Well, and, and everybody seems to be staying around kind of wondering. It's, it's kind of like when the fire alarm goes off. People don't get scared anymore. They're like, okay, who pulled the fire alarm? The referee is talking to Coach Kenneth Woolware of the Rams, and now he's going to go down and talk once again to, uh, let's see, with the binoculars, if I can tell who that is in the blue shirt. That may be uh, uh, the supervisor from the CIAA office. He's wearing a blue shirt, the colors of the CIAA itself. Well, and, and you know, the players want to play, and, and they're all lined up like they're going to play. And, and and Ken, he's probably got the worst job in 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 the in the stands because you know how we are. What are the chances of getting hit by lightning? Your chances of winning the lottery are better, right? Exactly. Or but actually, it might be the other way around. But um, yeah, you know. I think your chances of getting struck by lightning are a little bit 
higher than, get, than winning the lottery, especially if your last name is Or getting struck by me. If but, your last name is Winfrey. <laughs> right. But, but you know, it, it's it, you got to go with a safety if, if, if you know, if Mother Nature forbids something were to happen. Bop him on the it, head, it's yeah. his it's his young man it's this young man's uh or this gentleman's uh, responsibility and, and you know the Rams I, I believe where we're gonna start at is it's twelve minutes four seconds to play in the football game. So we counted the extra point. Rams are up sixteen nothing and I believe that roughing the kicker penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Correct. So now we go back into the uh, the situation we have. Now we can't see behind us, and I think you said there was a storm front coming from Louisville to the north of us. Definitely, that's where the lightning came from. I will tell you, fans, looking at the, at the way things are shaping up, that really I'd be shocked if if this the, the storm system to the north is what's causing the issue. I think uh, it's probably what's behind us, and uh, and then right away they they evacuate the the stands. Um, so uh, I don't know what that is either, but uh, hopefully I can uh, we can find out from the Weather Channel. Uh, we'll we go got to uh, Fox 8 Max radar up here, and what we're looking at right now is uh, well, static. Fox <laughs> 8 is not showing because this is where we are, and it's not showing any lightning on the Fox 8 weather radar site. Uh, it looks like the closest thing would be more towards Tobaccoville. And let's see. Did you, did you hear, I don't know if the static's coming through just a mic or on the air. Hopefully we're still... We're, we're still on the air, but right now they've, they've evacuated the uh, the stands anyway. And, and uh, both teams heading to the safety of the locker rooms.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to resume play after the team's warm up. So we thank you for your cooperation. We'll get started in a few minutes. No, you're supposed to say, Scott Brand, are you there? I certainly am. Oh, 16 to yeah. nothing. Last we week, it's only been Scott 24 hours, it seems like. I've been in this broadcast booth, Ken, but uh, Winston-Salem State had just scored the point after. There was a penalty on the play to recap, roughing the kicker. It's 16 to nothing, 12.04 left here in the fourth quarter, and Winston-Salem State is about to kick to UNC Penbrothy, and let's go live to Ken Winfrey with all the play-by-play. -play. Pembroke, I like that one. <laughs> Kicking yeah. off to uh, Pembroke, a nice uh, shoestring tackle there. I was trying to make him a little bit more upscale. Well, he is upscale. I like Pembroke, I like that. <laughs> nice shoestring tackle by Tyrell Fleming on the uh, kickoff return by the Braves. They'll have the football first and 10 at their own let's see where they're going to mark it they're taking their own good time out there call it the 20. Uh, the, the 20 that's a, the one thing about football is the officials will toss it to each other for you know four or five times before they finally put it down on the, the exact spot it goes back and forwards and it's like walking around with a, with, with a dog bone too as the players all follow you like where, where i know going? we're uh, first and 10 at the 24 pembroke with exactly 12 minutes to play in this football game as scott told you rams are leading handoff to number 37 it's been so long i forgot his name sheridan <laughs> <laughs> i think the original 37 graduated all these breaks here exactly uh, just uh, jones in uh, quarterback for uh the Braves. He started the game for the Braves. Was replaced by uh, he's a redshirt freshman. He was uh, a re uh, rather Josh Dale started the game. The redshirt freshman was replaced by Josh Jones and then Dale came back in. They've been alternating here in the football game. There's one player, Whitney McLeod. We will certainly have no problems identifying him on the football field for uh, for Pembroke uh, or rather Winston State because he's got on those fluorescent lime green gloves. A long pass is complete into Rams territory at the 40. It's a 35 yard pass. Yeah, 43 yard line. Like I said, uh, talking to Devin Goble's parents, you know, two long passes and they're back in the game. And uh, and, and this is this Josh Jones uh, quarterback I really like. But uh, <coughs> to tie the game, they'd have to score two touchdowns, obviously, and convert two two-pointed conversions. And it's very, very difficult. As the pass falls incomplete. Yeah, incomplete. Intended to quay threat. Put it about uh, half a foot over his head too far. And that's the uh, and, and Jones with probably the worst pass of the afternoon, but he's doing a nice job. He works out of the shotgun shotgun formation, and uh, we're going to see if the, the Braves continue to uh, air the ball out in the yard. Jones a little dumper uh, over the middle to number 41. That's McKinley Nelson. He's a freshman. They recruit heavily in the Monroe area. Have several players on their roster from Monroe, Monroe North Carolina. Third down and one. The football at the Rams 34 yard line. Hand off to Sheridan. He makes his way up the middle for the first down. So they've come out re energized after the lightning delay. They have. They've been they've been running the ball and passing the ball at will against the Rams. 10:23 to play in the football game, and of course, you know, they had time to go into the locker room and talk about the urgency. If you're going to get something done, you better do it now because there's not a whole lot of time left in the football game, but certainly enough time. 
Dylan Carson with the stop there after the game. Jones, pressure being put on, gets it away. The uh, pass is caught on the far sideline and now breaking towards the middle of the field and carrying it down uh, close to the five-yard line. Corey West, a sophomore, makes that catch. And he's from Boone, played at Watauga High School, and he did a good job running towards the sideline and then broke back to the middle of the field. And suddenly it's uh, first and goal at the, looks like about the seven-yard line for the Braves. Pass into the end zone, out of bounds. Scott, I think the official could have thrown a flag for defensive pass interference on the Rams had that ball been catchable. Yeah, I mean, there's no question. There's contact made and, and even a shoving, but but the ball was so far out onto the uh, out onto the racetrack as and, it went. And, as and the case was so here. high that uh, uh, it, it simply was uncatchable by anybody other than the referee standing over by the pylon in the far corner of the end zone. This time the pass in the end zone falls incomplete. Real nice cover there, uh, Carson, for the uh, for the Rams. But uh, you know what? Uh, 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 the Braves are doing this, uh, and Jones is doing this uh, a quick offense, a yeah. two-minute drill. Doing the speed-up offense. Uh, Sheridan out of the backfield was the intended receiver. And now it's third and goal from the seven. Another pass. And really at this point in time, in the wide open in the end zone for the touchdown is number 85. And quite frankly, Darius Skinner just got beat on that one. Well, it, it, it's almost like Winston-Salem State went into a prevent, uh, you know, defense, and all that does is prevent you from stopping people. Yeah. And, uh, and. I mean, I got to tell you, is, is the Braves just kind of walked down the field and, and scored with uh, with, with really, uh, hey, guys, go ahead and score. They did. A three with the uh, touchdown reception from seven yards out. Now they're going to go for two. They really have a choice. Although as, as, as well as they're moving the ball with the passing game here, they might not need to. And again, another pass for the two-point conversion. And I don't think he's going to have to throw this one away. Uh, so 16-6, to six, a 10-point Rams lead. The first score in the football game for UNC Pembroke comes with 9.15 to play here in the fourth quarter. Whitney McLeod there uh, putting pressure on the quarterback. Him and his, uh, I don't know what you would call those, neon gloves. The young Lime green. Yeah, I'm not well, sure those are quite legal, but <laughs> so it, it, it's 16 to six now. Uh, two point conversion, uh, not good. So, Ken, if I'm uh, if I'm the Braves, uh, I, I still got 9:15 left. Clear skies, which is important at this 24 hour football affair that we've been at. Um, do I go for the onside kicker? Too early. I think it's too early. Uh, the Rams had not shown much life after that opening drive of the football game when we scored our first touchdown until uh, the lefty, Amir Scave, or Scaff came into the football game for SU, and we've got some good hands up front, but they're going to go deep. Jahiz Lineberger takes it at the 18. Brings it across the 30 out to the 31, perhaps a 32. And the Rams have got relatively good field position, but the thing is we have got to capitalize on it. Still a two-score football game for UNC Pembroke, and the one thing that you have to do, Scott Brand, if you're the Winston-Salem State Rams, you have to protect this football. No fumbles, no interceptions. Oh, absolutely. I mean, in, in the... You know, they've gone in the air, they've had success, so they're going to see if they can keep it on the ground here and, and run the clock out, and they're going to keep it on the ground. And it is Scaff on the ground. He brings it across the 35 out to the 36. The 
nice healthy five yard gain on that first down play and that's what you like you, know, you like to pick up five or six make it uh, make the chain short for second and third down he's going to hang on to the football again brings it out to the 40 and it's going to be a yard or two shy of the first down but you know i like your odds with third and two when you have this stable of running backs that we have at Winston-Salem State. Uh, carry on more in the backfield. Yeah, now you can afford to. Now you can afford to run it. Now I heard uh, when I was outside the uh, the press box that Rod Tinsley perhaps was shaken up, and that's why Scaff came into the game at quarterback. The handoff to carry on, and he picks up the first down and more. He brings it out to the 45-yard line, and that's what you got to do. You got to move the football and chew time off that clock. We're now down to 7:54. Uh, Richard Miller would be happy because the clock does stop while they move the chains, but now it's running again. Yeah, right now Winston-Salem State just yeah, wants to use, funny, as much as the, use as much of the clock as they they can and. and and uh, not clock. give uh, not give the, uh, the the Braves the ball back as well as they moved it. It looks like both teams have come out energized here after the lightning delay. I guess uh, the scaff is dropping back, looking downfield. Oh. The pass is going to be just over the outstretched hands of Quincy Jackson. There's a flag on the play, and this could be holding. Boy, he got, uh, Skafka just got hammered from behind. Oh, he's pointing towards uh, the ineligible receiver downfield against the Rams. Well, that's, uh, you know, the, the Rams haven't been penalized very often today. They played a good discipline uh, game, and uh, and so that's what they're going to call is. Number 59, ineligible receiver downfield. Yeah, five yard penalty. penalty. Replay first down. Replay first down. But boy, did you see the arm on Scaife? Uh, he threw that football down to about the 15-yard line. Yeah, he uh, he he definitely uh, has some muscle and and, and and uses his size well. Threw it about 50 yards. Reminds me of Philip Sims when he played here a few years back. Philip actually played at Alabama before he transferred to Winston-Salem State and did quite well. This time, the pass intended to Quincy Jones. Uh, well, it's a turf burner. Well, he, uh, he uh, um, UNC here had real nice pressure on it, forced a, a, a quick pass, and uh, the offensive line's got to step up. We've had a couple injuries, though. It seems like uh, in the seventh quarter ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Was this before the first, second, third, or fourth lightning delay? Uh, I We've had about a half dozen lightning delays since yesterday. Or last night, I should say. All after the intended 6 o'clock kickoff last night. Carry on more the ball carrier. He is just gang tackled at the 40. They may give him forward progress to the 42. Got a little bit of a uh, draw play there. And uh, hand up off the middle and... Uh, you know, this is a big this is a big series here. I think the yeah. the Rams, if they can, uh, you know, they're still eight fifty one. Is that eight or six? Six. It's a six. I need to go get new glasses. It's Third down and thirteen. But the Rams did a great job of chewing a lot of time off that clock. The touchdown came with what nine fifteen. Yeah. So the Rams will have taken three minutes off the clock. Now the defense has got to stiffen up if we do not get this first down. Obviously a passing situation, Scaife, with intended to Amir. He's double covered, held on the play. Uh, Jalen Barber is wanting a flag. He was double teamed, and one of them kind of had his arm locked around Jalen. I, I thought it was I, I thought it was pass interference too, but I also got to tell you is you're, you're passing a double coverage there. I think you had a better target to to throw at, and I've never liked to have you know rely on the officials making a call. Absolutely not. Uh, Devin Goble punting from his own 25-yard oh, wow. line. This one is shanked a little bit. A lot of pressure put on him, but he gets a nice roll down to the 28. Or are they going to mark it farther upfield and say it went out of bounds? 
Well, they, again, uh, the punt went out of bounds on the near sideline, so all the Rams players standing down there, we couldn't see the exact spot. They're going to say it was a 33. So, uh, yeah, he kind of shanked the putt. You're right. He got the good roll on it. He seemed like he rushed the punt. I didn't think he had a lot of pressure on him. But, you know, it, it's getting down to crunch time. We've got 6'11 here to go. And, the, you know, first time he's ever punted in college. Jones, little shovel pass ahead. And the Rams are ready for that. That's a loss, loss of Loss on the play. Loss of about three yards back to the 30-yard line. He kind of shoveled it forward to uh, number 41, that's McKinley Nelson, freshman running back. Seemed like trying to have a, a cute trick play. I'm not quite sure now would be the time. I just give this young man the ball and tell him to throw the pill as far as he can. Second down and 12, and that's a risky play because that would not be a pass uh, the way he threw that. Now looking Receiver open at the 38-yard line. Pass is complete to number 85. That's Quay Three. They're going to give him up to the 40. He's a freshman. Oh, no. Oh, no, they're no. going to move it back. No, they better because he clearly came back. Well, they actually moved it back to the 39. Yeah, so. he's still got a yard advantage on that. He clearly went down at the 38. He came back two yards to make the catch and was falling backwards towards his own end zone when he caught it. So about third and four. Third down and about four. Big play coming up here. Five minutes, six seconds to play in the football game. 16-6. Rams are leading. I'm sure our defense is going to be disappointed if we can't. Did not get the shutout. Uh, but this time we just got to shut them down because that pass is complete for a first down into Rams territory. That's a 20-plus that's a yard completion, too. Corey West makes the reception before he's knocked out of bounds. At the Rams, uh, 40, let's see, they're walking it over. The 43-yard line at Winston-Salem State. So Pembroke suddenly has found some new life here after the lightning delay. I don't think that lightning struck their locker room and got them fired up. Jones, little dish pass again. Uh, gets away from the tackler. Uh, that's uh, Sheridan, and he's going to run all the way down to the 10 yard line. So suddenly it's first and goal for the Braves with 4.30 to play. Missed tackle there, set that play up. But the thing is, is Jones, you know, freshman, you know, I, I'd like to see his birth certificate because I don't know if this kid's a freshman. He is awfully calm and cool uh, playing from uh, from behind in the uh, in the pocket here. He's made some real nice passes. Lined up again, they're gonna go to the air. Tayshawn Taylor, and the, the pass goes off the chest of Shaman Hicks, but uh, Tayshawn uh, uh, Taylor, the freshman linebacker for the Rams, missed that tackle that allowed the big gain. Second down and goal from the 10-yard line. They cannot pick up a first down for 18 to play. Good coverage on that play by uh, Darius Skinner, but still, the receiver had time to make the catch. He just couldn't do it. Jones, the quarterback. Just this throws that one away. Yeah. Well, but, but smart play. There was really no place to go, and there's no, no sense in just uh, in, in just tucking it under there. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm impressed. Jones is at a very mature in this uh, in, in the position there. And, and, and all of a sudden now the Rams have done a nice job of, of tightening up defensively. You know it's going to be a pass because the Rams seem to be handling the run well. Uh, and this, uh, Is there a penalty flag on the play? Yes. Personal foul, intentional grounding against. Wait, wait, wait. wait. He said, oh, roughing the passer. Well, I don't know roughing the one. passer. I don't know about that one. That's a Did I miss something? <laughs> Automatic first down at the goal line. I did not see that. I mean, next time go out of town, go out of bounds. But again, that's uh, self-inflicted damage. Jones gets away from a couple of Rams tacklers, and he's going to carry it down to the goal line. Fumbles the ball as he goes out of bounds. He didn't cross the plane. No. 
Jones had nobody, uh, again, Rams defense doing a nice job there, had nobody pass it, to pass it to and kept it himself and gets down to the one-yard line. There's a 4.03 left here, and it's second down with a ball on one, but there's a uh, injured, uh, um, what are they, Brave. Uh, Brave. I almost uh, said Drake. There's Johnny Varga, a freshman, 6'2", 300-pounder from Cornelius, North Carolina, played at Huff High School. That's in the Charlotte area down in Mecklenburg County. He's up walking off under his own power, so it doesn't appear to be serious. And Sometimes, Scott, when there's not a lot of time left in the football game, a player will fake an injury to stop that clock. Wouldn't be necessary because the clock was stopped anyhow. But it gives his time's a little, uh, team a little time to regroup on the sideline. It certainly didn't look, had no problems walking off the field. And we're thankful for that. Yes. Ken, it's still 85 degrees here where it feels like... Uh, Feels like 94, so it's dropped a little bit, but it's still humid out there. But uh, let's hope the Rams defense can pick it up here. Second and goal. 3.58 to play, 16-6, to six, Rams leading. Two-score game, but uh, Pembroke knocking on the door. A yard away from the end zone, and now Jones is going to try to bulldoze his way in. He's going to be stopped short I, I don't by the center of that Rams line. I don't want to second guess anybody, but that may have been the worst play call. <laughs> I think maybe they thought the Rams have expected the last four or five plays have all been passes, and uh, and Jones, you know, Jones is a, a, a huge guy. Um, doesn't seem appear to have the leg power, but uh, I don't think running up the middle was a smart play. Maybe we'll give it to a running back here. Well, that's what they do. The pitch, Jack Nimmons. And they're saying he's in for the touchdown on that time. But on the previous play, Jack Nimmons, one of our veteran defensive linemen, it's going to be tough to get by him. So Pembroke with two quick scores here in the fourth quarter has made it interesting. It's now 16-12. to 12. Uh, It appears they're going for the extra point, which means a field goal would tie the football game if they were able to get within field goal distance again. Three minutes, 11 seconds to play, and this is a very big point after attempt right now. The kick is up, and it's good. Boy, I tell you, those, those officials take their own good time under those goal posts. Waiting to see if it lands. But yeah, the, you know, now you've got a three-point uh, three football game here with 3.11 left. I, I gotta tell you, is is you know, I, I think maybe uh, uh, the Rams felt that they had won the game when the lightning was called, and it's been all all Braves here. They've done a real nice job in, in offensively moving the ball, and they seem like uh, wherever they go to next, they have their offense kind of all set up. It's it's give Jones the ball and let him throw it. Now, both teams, if I remember correctly, right now they're showing an ad on the video board, but I believe both teams have all three timeouts. I believe you are correct. Uh, remaining in this football game, and it's going to be critical for the Rams to pick up at least one first down and chew a lot of time off that clock because the Braves have been using a hurry-up offense. Well, again, you got your opportunity for an onside kick here, but with just a touchdown, you probably want to kick it deep and uh, and hope your defense can uh, can uh, can stop them. Jalen Barber, the only one in the backfield. This one's going to go into the end zone. It will rolls into the end zone. No chance for a return by Jalen. When the kicker looks like he's he, he made a strain, so yeah, he did. Kicker's in pain. Oh, he's got cramps. He's cramping up over there. So um, that that that's important because he's going to have to be the one to tie the game. If they, uh, if they get an opportunity here, hopefully the Rams can pick up two first downs and end the game. Number 17, Rod Tinsley back in at quarterback for the Rams. Rod is going to hand it off to Carrion Moore. Carrion bounces off a tackle, heads to the far sideline. Flags are down. 
Rod is driven, or rather carry on driven back to the 20 yard line, the original line of scrimmage, but I think you would give, have to give him forward progress, but in all likelihood, this will be a holding foul. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's in the area where normally that's the, that's the penalty. Uh, and it looked like the, uh, can't tell if that's the umpire or the side judge back there. And indeed, it is holding against the Rams. There was no gain on the play. Uh, they're going to decline it and save time on the clock rather than giving the Rams a first down. And it would have been about a first down in 15 because the, the yardage is marked off from the spot of the foul, of the penalty. So it's second down. Well, they're saying he lost two yards on that play, and I strongly disagree with that because his forward progress was clearly beyond the line of scrimmage. He was driven back, but that's not where you mark the football, so I think that's a bad call by the officials. Carry on again, nowhere, dropped again for a loss, and that play has not worked for us all day. No, it absolutely has not, and the uh, – and, um, and UNC Pembroke is going to call timeout, stop the clock with 2.37 to go. It's going to be second down and 14 for the Rams. Coach was – Correction, third down. Coach uh, – the Braves coach was screaming for the timeout, and it cost him about, you know, four or five seconds there after the play ended, and I don't know why uh, – you know he's yelling at the referees. I don't, you know, I don't know whose responsibility is in, in football. In hockey, it's the, uh, it's the captain on the ice to, to call the timeout. But he's upset with the officials for letting the clock run down. So is it a captain? I knew here? hockey'd come in. Is it? Um, or can the, it sidelines? No, the coach can call timeout from the sidelines, but he's got to understand with uh, all the noise and everything in the stadium, the, the officials don't always hear him, and he's also got to understand that he's playing on the road and not in his home stadium. Good point. So I'm surprised he's not complaining to get his three or four seconds back, but there's 2.37 left here. Obviously, they'll uh, they'll probably get two plays off and then have the, uh, the time on the uh, two-minute warning there. And that's certainly not saying that the officials are partial one way or the other, but it's something you expect, you know, to lose a second or two when you're on the road. Nothing wrong with a little home field advantage. I think overall the officials do a good job. I've only seen one call today, one or two that I've disagreed with. Maybe a few spots, but again, the angle that we see it is completely different from what they see. Oh, the pass intended to Quincy Jackson is incomplete. That's going to stop the clock with 2.32 to play, and the Rams are looking at fourth down and 14. And Devin Goble into punt. And this is where you need a big punt. So he, he, he's, you know, um, I, I guess if I'm the Braves, I let the punt get away clean. Why go for the stop? Because the last thing you want to do is get a roughing the uh, the passer or roughing the kicker, excuse me. And uh, and so right now I would definitely want to. Uh, uh, now they mar they spot the ball and now they go out there and mark it back a yard. Uh, oh come on now, let's so make much, up our mind. So much for your home field advantage. So important kick coming up here, or punt, I should say. And it's going to be a short punt. It rolls out of bounds at the 49-yard line of UNC Pembroke. So they will have a short field to work with. 224 left here. The ball's marked exactly on the 50-yard line. And again, I thought it did go out of bounds at the 49. There, you get your yard back. It's been all Braves this since the lightning delay. Since the lightning delay. I almost said fifth quarter, which basically it is has been. Well, it's uh, Fisher Cup bait time for this uh, Rams defense. They got to bow their neck. Pass is complete down at the 38-yard line. Making that catch is Aaron Whitaker. And, and again, First down. Josh Jones putting it right where he needs to. I mean, there's there's no question that ball's going to find its target. He's been pretty good. Now, last year, the Rams beat the Braves by three points at UNC Pembroke. The Rams went out to a big lead, and then Pembroke came charging back and and uh, made a run at it towards the end of the game. I just saw some more lightning over on the east side of the stadium. Let's hope nobody else did, because it just I, called timeout. The Rams did. I know. Well, let's... Uh, at least I thought I saw lightning. But 
side of that tower. The good thing is that uh, the referees on the field, we hope, are listening to the broadcast, but in all likelihood they aren't. <laughs> because if they were, then... They'd hear me. They would uh, hear our expert opinion on some of their calls. There you go. 209 left here. Rams up by three points, 16-13. Braves threatening what, what looked to be a blowout. And then the um, delay uh, has turned into a, uh, a barn burner. And I've got to wonder, Scott, if a little bit of this is, you know, they have spent seven and a half hours on a bus, two and a half up yesterday, two and a half back last night. They probably got back home around 11, 30, 12, back on the bus early this morning. Excuse me, maybe they had bus legs and, and they're just now getting the legs back. Seems to be. This young man's definitely got his arm back, Jones. And he is, he's gotten into a rhythm here after the lightning delay, this time the pass incomplete. Again, it was that little low sidearm, not really a pass, shovel. It's more like a shovel to Sheridan, but uh, Sheridan can't hang on to it. That stops the clock with 2.04 to play, second down and 10. Each team now. Uh, showing the Rams with one timeout and Pembroke with two. Jones throws it out of bounds. Yeah, well, the receiver went out of bounds, you know, to, to begin with, so that, you know. Um, he couldn't catch it. No. He's, the receiver's wanting a penalty flag, but. I think he thought he got shoved out of bounds, and, and, and really, again, uh, jo Jones telegraphed to where he's going to pass the ball the entire time. That's on the right side of the field or his right side of the field, and, and he had the near side. Uh, he has three guys on the near side. I think he had one of the guys he may have been able to thread one in, but good good defense by the Rams. And even uh, the, the pass was still thrown about three or four yards behind him. This time the receiver wide open makes the catch as there's more lightning and it's a touchdown for Pembroke. And they have taken the lead they with a minute 51 to play. They absolutely have, and what a real nice pass. And right as he caught it and slid into the end zone, uh, a bolt of lightning came through. So uh, It did. Either uh, that means the man upstairs is uh, is uh, upset about uh, the defense of the Rams or or we're going to have another delay here. But uh, the, uh, the simple fact is that the Rams' defense, after playing splendidly up until the lightning delay, didn't come out of the locker room. No. After the delay. No, I think they thought that the game was over and, and they won it, so they're going to kick the extra point. This will give them a four-point lead, so a big, uh, big, big extra big point. Big extra point here, and it's good. And Pembroke has come charging back, scoring 20 points after the lightning delay to take a 20-16 to 16 lead over the Rams with a minute 51 to play in the football game. Unbelievable. Well, and you're right, Ken. It, I don't know what happened uh, with with the delay. It seems the Rams got cold and and the Braves got uh, got really hot. And, and I'm really really impressed. This this Josh Jones freshman, six three, two twenty pounds, uh, uh, from Wilmington, uh, North Carolina, played at Josh T. Uh, Hog uh, Hoggart uh, uh, High School. Uh, he has been, I think, phenomenal. I think if I was going to pick a player of the game, he'd be he'd be one of the considerations. He's uh, passed the ball well, but the game's not over yet. It's it, it's it's a touchdown away, and there's still a minute 50 uh, 51 with the Rams uh, offense. At least what we saw early on. And don't forget, they could break one here and run it in the end zone just to make it. Uh, you know, easy on us. And remember, in that opening drive in the football game, it was Ron Tinsley's 51 pass to Quincy Jackson that set up the first score in the game. So the Rams can strike quickly. We just got to do it because we only got a minute and 51 to go and one time out remaining. And I don't know if he's going to try and squib this one so there's no chance for a run back, but uh, we'll see. He's going to go deep. Jaheez Leinberger is going to take it at the 10-yard oh. line, drops it, picks it up at the 7, now takes off to the near sideline. He's going to be tackled at the 14. Jaheez, if he ha doesn't drop the football, uh, he's going to pick up significant yardage on that return. But I think that 
Yeah, he just momentarily took his eye off. You're right, Kenny. What he did is he, he, he started running before he caught the ball. He just got excited, you know, and, uh, you know, well, that thing's happened. But it's hope the Rams offense now is going to have to throw the ball to get it down the field. Minute 41 to play. Rod Tinsley looking. A little dump pass over to carry on Moore. Carry on slips and falls at the 15. That's just, you know. Bad, uh, you know, bad luck. Bad luck. Oh, you can so say. Fuel comes up a little bit there and gets uh, gets torn up, and and now the Rams in the hurry up offense. Second down and 11, a loss of a yard on that play, a minute 22. But the Rams end up losing this game, and Tinsley, oh, he escapes a tackle. He heads to the sideline, and he's going to run out of bounds for the first down. Boy, I tell you what, that, that's you know making the chicken salad out of you know what because. Mm. Uh, he was in the grasp there. I thought for sure he was going to get pulled down for a sack. He, he, or sack and and, and uh, able to able to dance around and, and more as importantly go out of bounds. But he picks up 10 yards with a minute 10 left here in the fourth. Stops the clock. Tinsley back, looking, looking. This time he will not get the pass off. He is dropped for a loss by number 30, and that is Luke. Brooks, he is a redshirt freshman from Pembroke. Played at Pernell Sweat High School. Well, the clock's right running. 58, 57, 56. Oh, we got to put time back on there. Quit talking over there, guys. The clock is still running. You, you got to put. I think they're going to add time back to the clock. Got to. They, they're talking over there and let the clock run. It's got to be. Well, they're going to say a minute 20. So we pick up two seconds. Yeah, that. actually, yeah, because <laughs> a minute timeout. ten. Minute ten when the timeout was called, so they're going to re-add the time and and uh, and uh, regardless, I mean. The, the, now, the, if the, I'm the Pembroke coach, I'm out there saying, "Wait a minute! Yeah. It was there's a minute ten. Yeah. But a big loss, uh, about an eight-yard loss on that play, brings up second down and eighteen for the Rams. But everything imaginable has gone wrong for Winston-Salem State since coming out of the locker room after the lightning delay. You're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I, I thought that they, they, they did a real nice job um, early on in the football game and then that delay. We're going to get a re another re-clock. 108 now, they're saying. So now we're going to 108, so we gained two minutes, two seconds, and now I think we just lost two seconds. Wait, wait. Now well, Tinsley, second down and 18, looking, going deep. Well, actually not deep, he was going. You know what, and he, he didn't have a chance to look up. He, he had, was having problems planting his feet there. I don't know if it had something to do with being rushed, but uh, Cameron Wills, Williams, who, uh, who we thought was blocked one by now, uh, was wide open up the middle. Darren Dowdle. Uh, as I see some rain now beating up against the uh, window here in the broadcast suite. Uh, Darren Daniel Sophomore, the intended receiver, uh, not who I think I would have gone to in this situation. Sinsley over the middle again to Daddle makes the catch. Not a first down. The clock will continue to run with 56 seconds to play. And you can bet Pembroke's going to take its own sweet time to get back. 49 seconds, fourth down and one. Big play coming up here. First down would stop the clock while they reset the chains. Pass caught by Kieran oh, wow. Moore. He's at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, the five. Touchdown! Rams on an absolutely incredible play. I oh my God is all I can say. With 30 seconds to play, can you believe it? I don't believe what I just saw. Can you believe it? There was a, a pass up the middle that was bobbled and basically batted backwards right into the arms of a Rams player who oh. took it, who took it uh, you know, the, the 60 yards for the touchdown. That play made no sense, Ken. I, I don't know how, I, I how that see, happens. I, I want to see a replay. <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard to describe. Uh, the pass was knocked up in the air. Carrion just had to be in the exact right spot to make the catch. He was, pulled it down, kick is up, and it is. 
eventually good. Good by Pavel uh, Buenaventura. But let's see if we can see this replay again. And I don't think legally I can show these guys the replay next door, the coaches. I, I, but with I, 30 I, seconds to play. Listen, it was a dump pass o just over the middle that was bobbled. I thought it was a it was a it was a poorly uh, thrown pass. It was, and, and, and it got bobbled. And the next thing you know, is a young man picks up the the rebound, as we would say in hockey, the deflection, I guess we would say here in football. The deflection off the glass. Yeah, and it just, it just ran and down, off it goes. It just ran ran out of 60 yards down, and it, it, it's. Again, carry out more. Unbelievable. The right place at the right time. Picks the ball out of midair. Just reaches up and picks it out of midair. So th th there's 30 seconds still left in the game. So the game don't don't shut the radio off yet. 23 because, uh, to 20. Rams up. Because the Braves' offense has been very good, and this Jones this Jones kid's been able to pick the uh, defense apart. And he has completed some rather long passes. But you can bet the Rams are going to kick it deep. Riley Robbins, a freshman. Well, they don't. They kick it uh, short. Uh, the ball bobbled at the 36-yard line. And the clock didn't move at all. Is that normal on a kickoff? It would be. But uh, I think it should have, have taken a second or two off. I think off. I would have had fast hands well, on the they clock. Did. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, Amari Bryce Green kind of bobbled the ball and then fell on it. Of course, on the kickoff, it's anybody's ball if it goes 10 yards. You're right. So the, they'll start, uh, the Braves will start on the 37 yard line. Two timeouts left. The, the officials are, are discussing something. And it could be the clock. Let's see what they're saying. They're coming they're over. Not, nope. Nope. Convicts we're gonna, are happy with what's going on. So it's first down and 10, Pembroke at the 37-yard line. That's Pembroke's own 37-yard line. Jones back, got plenty of time. And no, he's going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage. A huge sack, an absolutely huge sack by number 94 for the Rams, and that is Tyron Roberts, a defensive lineman, a senior from Lincolnton. And Davis telling me the replay is not working. Uh, timeout, Pembroke. There he needed the Ram de defense to show up. I mean, they they, they, they decided to take the uh, after the lightning off and, and now came back and made their one play, and now they're good. Now, Scott, <laughs> here here is a critical factor in this football game at this particular moment with 24 seconds to play. There's now a steady rain falling. Yes, there is. So, on the uh, football field. So, so that's, the ball is going to be slippery. It absolutely is going to be slippery. So is the field, though. The last thing you want is one of your defenders to fall down. I mean, we've already seen some slippage today, but uh, this but, is going to be interesting. But most of the slippage has been in that far uh, uh, corner towards the field house. Exactly. It absolutely has been. You can tell that's been torn up. But here we go. Shot torn formation, and there's a stand. Jones back, looking, looking to the sidelines. The pass is caught at the 49-yard line, make it the 48. He stays inbound, so the clock will start as soon as the chains are set. And, and Carson slipped there. I don't know if you noticed that Carson slip was able to go up and, and, and tag the man down. And uh, looked like there should have been a flag on that. Uh, there was movement for Pembroke, and I think the Rams players thought so. For 12 seconds of play. And a quick pass there. and uh, a gain of seven yards on the play, so the clock will stop as soon as... I don't think he was out of bounds. Well, I guess I they're saying he, uh, he was. Ball's on the 40-yard line of the Rams. 12 seconds left, Ken. Buckle your seatbelts, everybody. Well, the game last year at Pembroke went down to the closing minutes with the Rams hanging on for the win after taking a big win. This pass is incomplete. The uh, ball was trapped at about the 31, 32-yard line. And... So you got seven seconds seven to go. Seven seconds. You got one play, possibly two, if it's a quick play. But you really, uh, you got to pick up at least 20, 25 yards. I see. You got to go a hell mary here, don't you? I would think so. 
and Ennis Jones can can do it. I mean, I, I think what you need is, is you're going to have to, you know, what is that? We lose the connection with uh, seven seconds to play. Whistles blow, flag on the play. We've lost the connection with WTOB, but we are still on with live stream for those of you watching. Kind of like the Heidi game. Fans, you, you, we lost WTOB, you saw the greatest, no you didn't. The flag is the flag thrown, <laughs> it's going to go against Pembroke. It's a five yard penalty, I think it's a false start. We're waiting to see the indication, the signal from the referee. Uh, four seconds showing on the scoreboard clock, on the game clock. They should probably reset that, shouldn't they? Well, there were seven seconds. And they are. So, yes, indeed. So, one play left uh, for Pembroke to get it within field goal range or to score, uh, heaven forbid. Uh, I, I don't think you got time for a field goal. I think you got to put this in the end zone. And go for a Hail Mary. They only have one timeout left. Jones, he's going to go for a short pass to the sideline. I'm not sure the wisdom of that. It runs four seconds off the clock and only picks up four yards. Yeah, you didn't put yourself in field goal territory. This would be what? A oh, this would be 61. Probably a collegiate 72. record at all levels. It would be uh, uh, 50. It would be at least, at the very minimum, a 61 or 62-yard field goal. Well, Tom Dempsey did it for the uh, for the Rams with half a, or for the uh, heavy rain near Winston Salem. Let's get this last three seconds played. <laughs> Dempsey did it with the uh, Saints with half a foot, but they're going to go for it. So you got to imagine it's, this is a hail mary. It's going to be a hail mary. The one thing you don't want to commit a penalty because the game cannot end on a penalty. Quarterback throws the ball from behind, <coughs> hits the ground. A great defensive play there. I believe that was uh, 42. Jack Nimmons coming through once again for the Rams. Uh, pulls him by the jersey as he's passing the ball. The ball goes, hits the grass, and Winston-Salem State in a miracle comeback. First Wins this football game 23 to 20. A miracle blown save and then a miracle comeback. So they they, they, they saved themselves, I think, a uh, – a little bit of a rear end chew in there at practice, Ken, because they were absolutely awful after the uh, after the uh, at the lightning the delay, lightning, lightning de delay. But then to come back and, and and that catch, I hope they have it on film because that that's going to be one of those you're always going to remember. I I still can't get over what I saw. Carry on more. The ball deflected, bounces up in the air. Carry on reaches up, grabs it, and. Uh, the closest defender was uh, probably five yards behind him, and Carrion has good speed. It's tough to drag him down from behind like that, and he just put it into full gear and ran into the end zone to give the Rams the lead. And the win. And the win. Uh, but what an incredible finish. To what really, really, Scott was a boring football game before the lightning delay. It it, it was, <laughs> and, and you know it's it, it's uh, it's seven o'clock. We started yesterday at six, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, uh, or five something. Five thirty, I think. Free game show. Five thirty. <laughs> so it's it's been twenty four hours of football, but y y you're right. I mean, listen, I thought the first you know first three quarters, Winston Salem State controlled everything, did everything perfect. And then went in, and, and and I think I don't know if they popped the champagne or what they did, but they came out after the after the weather delay, and it was absolutely awful. And uh, they they proceeded to try and give the game to to UNC, and uh, and at that point realized we got birds. We'll come back to Bowman Grace Stay, uh, Stadium and wrap things up. Final score: Rams win it. What was the final score? Twenty. Um.